Ah. Oh, that, nice. that was not a college crack, though. <laughs> so you, you probably haven't listened, but our college crack is all about efficiency. Mm-hmm. Because when we drink, yep. we go for getting drunk fast. Mm-hmm. So Correct. The fastest that you can do, we call that college crack. Okay. Insert your mm-hmm. dominance. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm here. That's right. That's right. If you can do it one handed like that, too. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't think I've ever done it like that before. I don't think I'd be too afraid I'd drop a beer after I do it. Yeah, I would. I 100% Or I'd feel. squeeze it too hard and just. Yeah. It's like, Catch it! I, I think I shotgun my first beer in like probably like four, three years. Yes, today. It's been a hot minute, bro. Oh, God. It's a hot minute. How'd that go? Mm. Very well. Yeah, very well. It's, it's like you do a bike it. at the farm show. At the farm show in the parking lot. Oh, okay. I was gonna say <laughs> inside no, that. Be... The... Listen, I was so tempted to drink inside that place. Could have they... easily. I was gonna say they, they, you were doing tastings inside, they, right? You can buy the alcohol in there, but yeah. I don't know. If... I don't think you can. I don't think you can, but I don't think nobody would have said anything if you were. Hmm. Yeah, it's like the outdoor show. Really, I mean, they sell beer and stuff at the outdoor show. Yeah, we got some so, last year. Yeah, Just walked around with it. Yeah, it wasn't now. So they sell pounders, I think, right? Yeah, I think they sell, but then they have to pour it into something. Like they don't give yeah. you a can. They got to pour it in their cup for you. Yeah. yeah. So just keep the cup and then just have a backpack and just be discreet. <laughs> just discreet. Or get a camelback. I was just thinking that. Pour the alcohol in yeah. the camelback. Boom. That's there a great go. idea. Or you can customize a backpack with like a uh, pour joints on it. Yeah. Mm. So you build it so you have like the two, the, the, the what would it be like a gallon jug with the little squirt joint on it on the side. <laughs> oh, so yeah. The dispenser. <laughs> the dispenser on the side. Yeah. It'd yeah. be perfect. That'd Life be of it. the party. Oh, yeah. Life of the party at the. Farm show or the outdoor show, you know, whichever. Have Depends ever, on the month. Have you ever gone for yeah. Motorama with the race weekend or race week? I guess it would be. I've wanted to, but I never actually went. We used to go when we were kids. My older brother used to race there all the time. Yeah, they did like RC races, go karts, yeah, the arena cross, and they did like cars and bike shows in the back and all that stuff in the main event area. Yeah, you guys were dirt bikes, right? Well, yeah, so yeah. we're. I think we start. You start at like four. We been doing. We were doing it from when we were four to like up to. We stopped like halfway through college, or not college, high school. I was gonna say yeah, that's, we that's a long time. Yeah, we raced. Yeah. I stopped racing when I was like sixteen, but I kept riding. Mm. But once I started running track, I ended up quitting. Yeah, I just gave it up. I was like, I'm not. I never really liked it to begin with. I think <laughs> my older brother did it. <laughs> <laughs> not die. Yeah. Yeah. I think I went to. I went to like, the Monster Jam, at uh. At the farm show complex, went there a few times for that. That's when I was a dope. kid. I watched it on TV before. Yeah, because they do a, they do they film all that stuff live on TV. Mm-hmm. Like I used to watch the farm show on my TV all the time. Like that's where I want to go. I want to watch the rodeos. I yeah. want to watch the. So they do like the police drill teams and all that stuff. They do like the mm-hmm. right, the horses on that stuff. I wanted to yep. watch that in person. Literally, I missed it because we we're roaming around doing dumb stuff. We we're on a good buzz <laughs> watching lambs get judged and i was like damn i forgot i forgot they did other stuff here Man, look at that lamb that's a nice lamb right walking there around just touching smacking its ass was like that's a good lamb <laughs> they send him around the girl would walk around and like they like have the lamb come up on their chest and they're pressing them up against their chest like spreading their legs out making them like beefy and all that stuff dude is hilarious beefy lambs yeah beefy lamb. look at the loins on that they one. literally <laughs> shave their whole body and literally leave the hair like right below their knees oh it's hilarious that gets me going <laughs> 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 no shaved angles. hairless legs that's what gets me every time all right so we're live and i'm gonna test this out right now at the woodshed studio i kind of like it Ooh, that's a new one yeah yeah see Did how that shoot? flies with the listeners they probably they'd probably won't even catch it honestly. They probably nah. It sounded I don't know, clean, right? I thought about that on my walk out of the woods today. The Woodshed Studio. Yeah. There you go. But you got me, Cody, Andrew, Ethan, and we got a guest. Yay! Zion, Zion. Yeah. how's it going, man? I'm doing all right. You want to introduce yourself to the listeners? Um, pretty much who you are, uh, where you're from, how you got into fishing, you know, all that kind of good stuff. All right. Yeah, I'm Zion. I'm from. Berks County, just like a few, like 20 minutes south of Reading. Uh, so I grew up fishing and hunting basically because my dad did. And like when I was a kid, my dad was like, he grew up in the city. So a lot of the stuff he did with my papa was they got out of the city and they went mm-hmm. fishing and they hunt, went hunting and all that stuff. And they, they my dad grew up in Tamaqua. So 
we did a lot of stuff up there. Like every time my dad would go fishing, he'd take us. He put us in our waders, and we always went stocking and fishing and all that stuff with the mm-hmm. state and all that stuff. So that's pretty much how I got involved into it. And yeah. Dad would take me up into the tree stand. He put me on his climber, and we'd climb up the tree stand and go <laughs> hunting and all that stuff. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. And, and you're you're primarily fishing. Yeah, I hunt very little. Once I went to college, I stopped hunting for four years. The whole four years, I didn't hunt at all. Yeah. I used to hunt a little bit there before in high school, but I was focused on sports. And then mm-hmm. that was the only thing I did. I just kept fishing the whole time. Like now, it's like predominantly like I love fishing. It's more easier yeah. for me. I can dial that in. Hunting's yeah. real hectic and a whole lot of <laughs> yeah, a lot of stuff. I love hunting. I can sit in a tree stand all day though. Yeah, yeah. It's if you had the right tree stand, you could sit there all day. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't I mean, had a luck. I haven't had good luck this year. Yeah, everyone else had good luck. They were every stand that I wasn't in, they were doing good. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I'd, I'd bump stands, and every time I went, I saw nothing. I saw one small four point this year, and I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> Trying to put brow tines on that thing so bad. <laughs> put a third there. Put a third there. Put a third there. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty much how everyone sees is going in this room right now. Yeah, I've other than this like guy, probably 40, 20 dough. Yeah, yeah. It's I insane. wish you could see some dough. I do. I wish I could see some dough you at this tags? point. Oh yeah. I don't. I have. I had three dough tags for different WMUs though. So like, I would have loved to shoot a five B dough mm-hmm. today or yesterday or any other time I've been out. <laughs> <laughs> any day. I've seen dough almost every time I was out, but it was just like ah, I'm not worried about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's some people's prerogative, you know. Mm-hmm. That, that's how it is. But <clears throat> so let's talk fishing. Now I'm not a big fisherman in the room. Ethan and Andrew are the big fishermen so in the I room. Just, <laughs> I know. You thought of the story. I thought of every, every time Cody's gone fishing, at least with me, he gets so pissed the rod ends up in the water. I don't, <laughs> I don't throw the rod in the water. <laughs> pretty damn close. <laughs> He's he like, I hate this. Slap. This is so stupid. <laughs> I'm done. This is so dumb. Gets rid of it. And he's, fin- he's off. I'm scouting and leaves. <laughs> well, my issues are, one, I don't know what I'm using to, to catch the damn fish. All right. And then, two, I always get snug or snagged, whatever the hell you want to say it. I get s- snagged. I'm, I'm get snugged. Snugged. I get snugged all the time. <laughs> you get caught. You yeah. Get caught. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, hung, yeah. Up. Yeah, hung up. Been or, like, I get, I, I get caught, and then I think it's a fish, and I start reeling really quick. Mm. Like, that's my you issue. Get excited. Yeah, I do. The excitement kills you. It does, yes. <laughs> we got to take you back to, like, bobber and worm. See... Yeah. That's a great. Let's start there, Take okay? Because it's a big debate about that. Like I, my dad had a friend that was purely against bobbers. I hate bobbers. Okay, so you hate, hate bobbers. bobbers too. Bobbers floats. I didn't. I do not like it at all. It bothers <laughs> me. I can't fish it. So like, what's what's the? Do you judge someone? Will they have a bobber on? Oh, if they're not catching a fish, I'll get on them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know why you're not catching a fish? You got that bobber on your damn line. I've caught that insult once or twice. Yeah, yeah. I get it every once in a while. <laughs> so, like, why is, like, why, why is that? Why is there such a hard, like, it's almost like the whole crossbow <laughs> thing in hunting. Like, there's a big bobber thing. Like, oh, you're cheating. Like, is that, is that why? Or, like, what? what's... I don't think the bobber's cheating. It's a, just a different technique. Mm-hmm. Well, there's also different variations of bobbers, too. Some have floats. Some have, like, foam. Some have, like, actual plastic bobbers. And there's, mm-hmm. like, they make, like, feather ones, too, now. And feather then, ones. Now they actually have indicators. Do you see the swivel indicators on the line? That Literally, the line is coiled up. Yeah. So when you hook on a fish, the coil stretches out. It's what? insane. I just saw that a couple weeks ago. Dude, they're it's, making so many things. It's like fishing with a slinky. Yeah. And as soon as you see that slinky go, you're like, oh, fish on. we're on. Or or you're not. You yeah. got other <laughs> issues. Just, in your case, yeah. it might be snagged <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, that's my worst fear, okay? I put a bobber on, and I still have fucking issues with it. Still get snagged. Like, I still have those issues, and that's, that's my biggest fear. Mm-hmm. So that's why I don't go fishing. Even though I'd love to go, like I like going shark fishing, I like going deep sea fishing, that kind yeah. of stuff. But like streams, I I like bass. Bass are pretty cool. I've gotten in the bass the past few years. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to dial in because I got a boat and we do all the we do blue marsh, drubal, oh, and all that okay. stuff near me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, bass is bass is a fish that I like because they put up a good fight. Yeah, and it's it's a good hunt for them too. Yeah, yeah, it is. Like you gotta find the beds, you know that kind of stuff. Like and then also you got to have something on your line that doesn't get caught in the where they're betting yep. at. 
It's like they're stupid too, which makes it a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Well, not not stupid, stupid, but you don't have to be as accurate. Like yeah. with trout, bass will hit anything. They'll hit a six yeah. inch rubber worm. Hey, <laughs> that's what I'm here for. But here, hear this. So <laughs> the buddies that I usually, my dad's buddies, I go up to Erie. They go up in there and they spin fish, and this dude threw on this pink worm. It was about five inch pink worm and caught it a ten pound steely on it. Ooh. He threw it on there for shits and giggles, and they're up there. So you know the tubes. Yeah. He was in there, and he threw it out there for shits and giggles and hooked onto a monster steely and reeled it in. <laughs> Insane. He I... showed me a picture. Dude, it was a. It was a tank. It was a. Tank. Oh my god. <laughs> I couldn't even catch them under those. Well. Let's first explain for people that aren't from the Erie or fish in Erie. Tubes are essentially the underside of a bridge. See, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, yeah they call so, them tubes up there. Yeah. Tubes? tubes? Undersides of bridges are Tunnels, tubes. Tunnels, tubes, they call them tubes. Same, same shit. It's all same, the same bridge, bridge, different area. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless, like that is, that is the spot to be, but mm-hmm. I, I couldn't even get the job done with egg sacks under there. Yeah. Now, when you say egg sacs, I'm, I don't know what the heck egg sacs are. So, Zion, go ahead. You're the expert on steelies. Well, ex- they're literally... What are steelies? <laughs> steelies, <laughs> they're trout. Essentially, they're a rainbow trout. Okay, yep. So, depending on who you ask, you'll get a different story. Regard- it don't matter who you ask, you'll get a whole completely different story, but it's all literally kind of beat up the same way. So, like, my interpretations of a steelhead is it is a rainbow trout, mm-hmm. but when they're in a lake and they're whatever when they were raised out in the lake they are chrome they are super bright chrome fish they're steelhead mm-hmm. and once they get introduced into the streams when they're would make the, making their run yeah. upstream and once they get in there for over 24 to 48 hours they start losing their color and they turn into rainbows where they lose their chrome color and they start having their green their dark browns and their red stripes come on and their pigments start coming out more okay so you have like <clears throat> oh excuse me Holy crap! Jeez. <laughs> He's My God, this this brown trout stout is really getting me. <laughs> so you have like a select time frame to have them be that steel color. Yeah, that's that blows my mind. Yeah, it is. It does. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a crazy it's crazy how it works, but there's so many of them. Mm-hmm. It's like you're gonna see one regardless no matter when you when you go up there it's just there's it's almost like the salmon run they're just consistently coming up all day wow the first so obviously zion's here because we just went on a trip in november right yep and i'd never seen like salmon run or steelhead run in person i'd only ever seen videos i was like as as a biologist i was really interested in that Mm -hmm. and seeing it for the first time Actually, getting there when we went to that that hatchery, yep. I was like, "Oh my Seeing god!" In person is the most it's, beautiful thing ever. It's insane. Like you got fins out of the water; they're stacked up like next to each other, zero space in between because mm-hmm. there's so many of them. At this hatchery, it's not it's not your typical yeah. hatchery. Yeah. It's like, uh, was it fishing boat utilizes yeah, this, be, this small yeah, so area? It's a small stream that comes out that feeds into Lake Erie. Mm. But it's so small you can't fish it. Right. So they the fishing boat I don't know how they did it, but like they claimed the area that they small use stream. So what they do is literally it's like the first like fifty yards of the stream, there's a, they put a dam in there so that all the fish get stacked up and all that and they come down and they net the fish out for the hatchery and they put them into the trucks and I think they actually do it right down there. They do there's live feed of you if you want everyone to see it, there's on the, mm-hmm. there's live feed of they they pull them out in nets and they literally squeeze the eggs out, do the whole sperm and all that stuff. Yeah. There's PA it right there. PA Fish and Boat actually just posted this. Uh, Send that to me. I'll link it in the video then. Sure. Yeah. It's uh, from December twenty eighth, twenty twenty two. Mm-hmm. Um, if you guys are on Instagram, um, from or, P- at PA Fish and Boat, and they have the whole process on there of them extracting eggs and mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. That's cool. Um, That's but cool. yeah, I'll get that over to you so yeah. the listeners can check yeah. it out. Check it out on the YouTube channel. If you don't want, if you don't want to, you know, listen to our voice only, you can check out our beautiful faces too. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I had, I recently looked up the exact answer on why they change color. So like, why the, when they're in the lakes, it's backtrack. So their life starts in the streams, right, and then they make yep. their way back into the lake. Mm-hmm. They get down deep to where light's not hitting them as much. 
and they got these little like I don't know, the exact word is a chromatophore. I don't know what to call them, but yeah. they're essentially like pigment um, holders or, or something like that. And they either expand or contract based on like light around. So when they're super deep in the water, light's not hitting them. So they just, they're that drab steel color, which is mm -hmm. cool. But when they get up in stream, they got more light hitting them. And that's right. why they, they revert back to that normal yeah. rainbow huh. color. Yeah. Interesting. I learn something every that day. That blows my mind. That like science. That's <laughs> science. first of all. I was not very good in science. I like science class. Oh, it's great. Yeah, I love science. But I'm just my brain, you know, just not all there, you know. Chemistry, can't. biology. Biology I was good at. Chemistry I sucked. I was good in chemistry. Really? Yeah. Would were you good at biology too? I was all right. I enjoyed huh. it, but I wasn't great at it. Maybe it's like, you know, you're good at one or the other. Yeah. Just, uh, just a thought. Just a thought. <laughs> food for thought there. <laughs> Some would call it <laughs> who's good at both. I, I think need... we should start doing that. <laughs> and you should put, like, get a fake phone number. Like, not a fake phone number, but, like, one you, like, plug in and, like, have people call in. Yeah. Like, here's, here's our number to call today. Like... Just call and be like, a burner phone. Yeah. like, this is our phone. <laughs> it's not yeah. for this live stream. And you throw it out. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's be like, why are you buying so many phones? Burners? Yeah. I mean, what else? So, for the steelhead, when you guys went up in November, how was how were you, like, fishing them? Like, was it, I know that's, that's a very loaded question, pretty much. But, like, were you fishing the streams or were you fishing the lake? Like, how was it? What was the whole process like, and like, what were you fishing with? So, you can fish the lake, mm -hmm. but depending on where you're at, because the hatchery, you're not allowed to fish that stream that feeds into the lake. You're mm -hmm. not allowed to fish the stream at all. So everyone right. faces out towards the lake. You yeah. can fish facing towards the lake at that one spot, but I know other spots you can fish the streams coming in or going out to the lake, but like. Pacific spots have their own rules and regulations. There's yeah. signs all the way up, everywhere up there for every. But most, we were fishing streams for the most part. Okay, all right. <clears throat> yeah, that that you guys were saying like, guys will literally sit like right on that tributary. Yeah, right on that tributary. Mm -hmm. There's, vi there's there, videos. It's hilarious. There, like, that whole beach will be packed, shoulder to shoulder, all the way like, 250 yards down the whole beach, and then right where that stream's at. There'll be a five foot gap because <laughs> you're not allowed to fish there. Yeah. And fish and boat will watch the people that are right there. The moment they turn over and start fishing that outcoming water, they get them. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That's like the gray area. Yeah. It's it's a real weird gray area. Yeah. It's like a steelhead area. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yeah. There's a good one. I, thought, I thought that was. You're clever. It was you, good. I liked, it. I liked it. We'll take it. We'll take it, it. It took a little bit. You know, you had to think about like, oh wait. Uh, All right. Great. Yep. Yeah. 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 Real zinger. Yep. Anyways, so. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> like, Continue. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> that off real quick. Dad jokes. You know. You gotta, yeah, you're, you're, hey, you're about there. to be there. Yep. Soon Almost enough. there. A month. Yeah. Well, probably when this comes out, I might be a dad. Yeah. That's true. Very hey, possibly. Congratulations. Hey, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're in for zero sleep. Hey. It's all right. Mm. I got coffee. Yeah. But also, we have partnered with Our Grounds Coffee Company. If you go over to ourgrounds.com um, or their website, I don't know their website exactly, but if you go to Instagram, BCPA, save 50%. Drink their coffee. Yeah. It's Continue. really good. It Continue. Really is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So when we were up, Zion... Lake Erie looked like the beach with all the waves crashing in. It so was, it was it was some weather up there. Yeah. yeah. We knew it was gonna be rough, but when we got up there it was rough. <laughs> we got caught in a fucking blizzard. Oh, like man. an actual blizzard. Yeah. We, how much snow did we get? Like twelve inches? A yeah, whole foot? That first day. Yeah. And then it snowed again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my so God. we were up there, they already had snow. Yeah. And then when we got there, we got there. Thursday. Yeah. We went we, up Thursday. Yeah, we got there. We we ended up getting an Airbnb literally right off the lake. Oh. So it, was, it would have been beautiful to be able to see the lake in, like, <laughs> pristine condition and all that. But we went up there, and it was the lake effect. And they said, yeah, we're on a snow today. And it was, like, 
four foot, five foot wave just pounding the coast. Snow was going sideways. Oh Snow was God. on the beach. We were just getting hammered. It was insane. Oh, yeah. It was brutal. But I mean, we, so we are like fishing that gully. The Uncle whatever his face is campsite. Uncle John's. Uncle, Uncle John's, John's campsite. Yeah. He so. has a, there's a, so the Elk Creek is a popular creek that a lot of people fish. And it goes really far. It goes super far. And they fish that whole stream all the way up. Mm-hmm. But literally right up, right up from the mouth of that stream, probably not even that far up. It's probably like half five, a mile yeah, to a mile. Five minutes up from not the even. lake. There's this guy. It's a Uncle John's campground. You can go there and rent out a cabin it's like five ten dollars to park there if you want to fish mm. and literally they have his live stream cameras up there so if you're planning a trip up there you just go on his website look at the live stream see how the, the waters are doing and yeah. everything so you can just plan literally your whole trip like oh the water's doing good right now we should go up tomorrow's probably a good day yeah so that's pretty cool but we fished there po- mostly the whole time i don't think we bounced around we bounced around a little bit up yeah there. we went to that <clears throat> what was it 16 mile I couldn't even tell you. One of those. My dad knows all the streams up there and everything. Like, I go up there. I know everything. Like, everything looks familiar. If I want to drive up there, I can just drive. But, mm-hmm. like, the stream names, I don't know none of them. <laughs> I don't know none of them. I'm like, we can fish here. That's I know this deep spot. hole. That's yeah. where I fell in. Yeah. I know that. That's it. Yeah, but that, that with the stream names, it just takes time, like, going up there repeatedly. Like, yeah. you know, like, up at Ethan's cabin, like, Ethan can name almost every stream that he's fished at and like holes that he goes to like he has those areas that he goes to mm-hmm. same with andrew at his cabin same with you at your when you're up yeah. at your cabin like you know erie i mean that's four hours away and you go there like maybe i go up there probably i do new york and erie so I oh, go, really? i'd take probably two or three trips up each way oh okay <clears throat> all right you go to pulaski new york or do you i do I don't he like, was like, don't, I don't like go- that. No, don't you can say, say I don't like going there because it's always packed. It's brutal. Yeah. It is brutal. Because my dad, my dad went there in the 80s, 80s, to go salmon fishing up in Pulaski. Mm-hmm. He said it's shoulder to shoulder. It's insane. It's, he it goes, insane. if someone gets a fish, you got to get your line out of the water so quick <laughs> or that you're, that salmon's going to take everyone's line out. fight up there. Oh yeah, they're crazy. They yeah. fight up there, <laughs> like brawl. Like, they will brawl on the side of the stream. Oh like there is Russian people there. There's like every. You say there. Russian? Russian. <laughs> Russian people. Yes. In Pulaski, New York. Oh yes. What? Well, lots of them, dude. What was what was that? <laughs> German people. It's all kinds of people up there. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Just over these salmon. Yeah, dude. Like the salmon run is the most intense run ever for fishermen when you go up to New York. It is unbelievable. It's like literally, you go up there. There's campgrounds everywhere. You can't drive down one back road and, without seeing a campground that says Pulaski. Yeah. Fishing, fishing lodge. Yeah. Fishing lodge, fishing lodge, hunting lodge, ski lodge, whatever, dude. It's everywhere. Yeah. You fish Damn. cleaning here, fish cleaning there, <laughs> fish cleaning there. It's, it's insane. You can't like if you go up there and you're forgetting something. You you literally you can walk down the road and find something. Wow. There's stores mm-hmm. everywhere. Damn. So, is do you think the salmon run is as? It's obviously bigger than the steelhead run. Mm. Or do you think it's close to the so, same? So the salmon run has steelhead. Okay. So you go to New York, there is steelhead there. Okay. But what I've known and what people tell me is Erie is known for their steelhead run. It is steelhead. You don't get the salmon. You do, but they're unicorns. You catch a mm-hmm. you catch a salmon out in Erie. It's you call it a fish of a lifetime out in here, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much, because they've catch. I've seen pictures of people catching Atlantic's, the regular Atlantic, Atlantic salmon, the Cohoshins, all that mm-hmm. stuff there. But it's like very few photos you'll ever see. Yeah. But from my understanding, is Erie has the most production of them, so you'll get a lot of steelhead consistently. Okay. New York, you'll get a little bit of them, mm-hmm. but they're massive. You get okay. big steelhead in New York. So they're they're bigger than the ones that like the one Andrew caught. Oh yeah, like is that you'll a... get like easily over a five pound steelhead in New York. Damn, but you is just that... won't get a lot of them. Yeah, they'll come up. These you'll see them. They stand out clear as day. Like salmon and a trout, completely different oh, fish. Yeah, yeah, like the steelhead and yeah. the like. I'm no fisherman, but I can like. Yeah, you can point I'll that out. I'll be able yeah. to tell. Like, <laughs> like, like oh, like oh, that's a palomino. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a steelhead. Do y'all hit Ontario in New York, or is that still eerie? Uh, I don't know. I never fished that. Okay, is it is it closer to Buffalo or like further upstate? I couldn't even tell you. 
I couldn't know. even tell you. You just know the area. Yeah. You don't know names. You just know the area. <laughs> the area. You're talking it's like... not me trying to keep it a secret. Like, my dad just takes me up there and I just go with him. He's he... like, we just know people that, we just have good friends and people that we meet up there and they just say, yeah, come up. Yeah. I'll show you around and all that stuff. So, most of it's just being up there, meeting people in the stream. A lot of fishermen are really nice, but mm -hmm. you'll come across our trip. We've, we've had some crazy experiences <laughs> oh, on the stream. Share them. Share them. <laughs> it wasn't that. even me. It was my dad. <laughs> I want to hear it. <laughs> dude, he lit this guy up. He was, dude, he, he let dad. the hammer oh, down. Oh, dude, like, it was like a, <laughs> what would it be, a Comedy Central roast on this dude <laughs> from across the stream. Across the across stream? Across the stream. Oh, can so you the like... dude was just... So we, when we were walking up, the dude was already up there, but he was fishing on, so it's hard to explain. We were fishing on the one side. When we walked up, we were walking up, it would be the right side of the stream for us. So we were walking up the right side of the stream, and the dude was on our side, and like he stumbled, that he was like running down the stream when we, me and Andrew came up, and he crossed like through the deepest part of the hole and walked right out in front of everybody, and then walked on the back side and was fishing across from my dad and all that. And then what started it was, it was, well, that, that started it because first he didn't realize he was fishing next to my dad and like kept on like creeping up on him and didn't see my dad in the woods. Yeah. And then he heard up like stormed down and crossed out front of me and Andrew walked down through the deepest hole where most of the fish were sitting. And then he walked up past these two guys and was with his buddy and he hooked onto a fish and the dude didn't realize he had a, he had a foul hook and he oh, had it on the it, cross it, the back. It was clear as it day. It was so obvious. It was clear as day. Yeah. And the dude was sitting there fighting it like laughing about it. it was like oh he doesn't even know it's hooked like dude <laughs> like get it out of the stream yeah like like you're you screwing with fish, everyone like pull it out there's like five guys fishing a hole we're all trying to fish and you're sitting there just jerking it off in the stream so like <laughs> my dad thought it was like what are you doing he's like what are you talking about he's like you can get that thing the hell out you have it snagged he's like yeah it doesn't even know he's like proud about it i'm like dude get it out of the water yeah but like the dude was just being real weird about it and my dad like he was smoking his super big cigar my dad was like i forget what he said because it was like multiple things that just happened my dad like my dad would just punch him punch it was one after him. another dude, after it was like another, so like... i can't even remember what he was saying because there's just so much stuff he was like you're sitting there smoking that big fat cock cigar <laughs> fucking something blah 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 you're fucking up the water stream because you're because when you hook onto a fish the fish when it it's running, it's pushing mm -hmm. other fish around, and other fish start getting active, and they start moving around, jumping all over the place, and going up and down stream. So mm -hmm. he had a foul hook to fish, and he's just sitting there fighting around in the hole in front of everybody. He's like, you're fucking up the fishing, and then the dude's like, oh, I guess I'm, I'm guessing up. I guess, or no, the other dude was the dude below him that said, yeah, he's messing up the air pull. The air pollution, <laughs> the too. Air quality that's what, with the air the quality. That's what my dad was like, yeah, you're fucking smoking that big fat cock cigar. <laughs> and, like, kept punching. was like, you stupid. Like, was going at him, bro. Yeah. It was hilarious. The dude was sitting there like, chill out, man. Chill out, man. It was, like, <laughs> super scared. Like, he thought he was going to get beat. Oh, well, he was going to get beat up if he said something. Yeah. But it was hilarious. Oh, my God. I, I just met his dad, too. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it's like, I like this guy. <laughs> he doesn't put up with, the, like... When you're fishing, like most fishermen, like 95% of them are really cool. Like mm -hmm. when, especially fly fishermen, because most fly fishermen know how to fly fish. Even if you're learning, like most people, you can go up like, hey, what are you using, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like you can fish next to another fly fisherman and fish literally shoulder to shoulder and not cast over each other and yep. tangle each other up. But that dude was just something special. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He was just something special. That he, is... he had a death wish. Yeah, it was just bad. <clears throat> or something. It was really I bad. Mean... I mean, come on, common courtesy, don't walk through a hole. Yeah. Especially when other people are fishing it. You know, like, how can you not, like, you guys aren't wearing, like, camo to blend in. But it's also, it goes, like, yeah. when you're fishing, like, some people know how to look at water and tell where deep spots of water mm -hmm. are. They clearly did not. I don't know if he knew that that was a deep part where <laughs> the fish were at. I knew because I fished there, like, I fished that stream for the past, like, four years, so I know where all the pockets are and, like, yeah. I know where the fish are at. And literally, I was like, oh. God, I don't want to fish there no more. <laughs> oh, Andy was like making fun of us because what was it like oh. two hookups? Oh yeah, no fish. Because we what came, set your dad we came off. Up, yeah, that's what that's what started the whole thing off. We didn't even realize he was he was talking shit on us. That's why my dad went off. Because me and Andrew came up, and I hooked on to a fish literally like my second cast on a fly that I tied, and then Andrew hooked on the one, and we both lost our fish. And the dude said something smart, but we didn't hear. He's like, oh, yeah. What did what, he say? He said, uh, two hookups, zero fish. Yeah. Oh, that mm. dick. So my dad heard it. That's like, that's like, my dad was just boiling at that point. He was like, 
say something else and he hooked on that fish and it literally just set him off because you're just sitting there jerking him off in the water trying to <laughs> fight it like dude come on now his oh his words exactly on that jerking yeah off in the water. he did he was like, you're jerking the fucking fish off in the water dude i wish i had my phone dude like literally i was sitting there like oh my god like it was the worst i see my dad chew into somebody but it was the greatest fucking thing ever <laughs> I hope when I die, I relive that moment. <laughs> like, really you want to be... That flashback, like, like, I need to be there, but I need to see, visualize that again before I go. Like, yes. when you when you die, like, you just live in that moment the rest of your afterlife. Like, just... I would be in pure joy. Oh. Be laughing out Dude, in the yeah. woods. Yep. Freezing my, my dick off, but well, still There is that. Yeah. He does not yeah. put up with people that are assholes there is in the that. stream. See, mm. so how do, you, how do you stay warm when it's that cold you and you're fishing? You don't. You like there's no you like don't. you can't move around like it's not like you get out the water and you I pace up and down the stream like I'll get out and walk yeah back and forth for a little bit get warmed up walk back in the water and fish so are you in are you in waders and you're actually in the water yeah shit chest waders that's cold steel we, so we got steel studded boots so because up there it's like really rocky and the rocks are slippery and all that stuff mm-hmm. but yeah it's, it's it's cold real cold when we were up there it was really cold like you get in the water you're cold within ten minutes. Ooh. Yeah. And then literally after that, it's like every five minutes, you just feel your toes just curling up and like getting super tight and all that stuff. It was bad. It was real bad. <laughs> yeah. It was miserable. My boots were frozen. Like I was in the water and the longer you're in the water, the more heat is just sucking out of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you get out of the water and if there's snow on the ground, your boots freeze. Yeah. And that's even worse because you can't move your toes around. Ooh, Yeah. So the first yeah. day I was sitting there, I was trying to tough it out. I was just like, <laughs> I'm a man. nah, man, I'm a man. we're good. We're going to keep fishing. I'm going to get a fish. Yeah. Day one goes by, nothing. I'm freezing my ass off. I'm like, fuck. First day was rough. Yeah. And then Zion's dad gave me some uh, toe warmers day Ooh. two. I was like, you know what? I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> so, ha- like, so you're fishing there. You know, you have this instance where the guy comes through. What day was that when he did that? That was the first day, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's like, oh, man, is this how it's going to go? <laughs> Starting off strong. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, after that, when did you catch, when did all three of you, was there only three of you up there? It was. Six of us. Yeah, okay. six, oh, of six of us. Oh, six of us? Okay. Me, my two brothers, Andrew, and my, one of our friends we grew up racing motocross with. Okay. We, all right. We took a nice trip, but we took two trucks up. Yeah. So, when was... Out of the six of you, when did you hook into your first one? You were first, right? I'm trying to think. Because you caught that one right above the tubes. Or maybe Austin had the first yeah, one on the I don't think we exact. caught ours the first day. No, you caught one the first day. I know for a fact you did because I was like, all right, this is setting the pace. I'm ready. And I didn't get shit, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Yeah, because I know... Yeah, Austin caught his first one down at the bridge, like, right when we first got there. We went up probably the stream. I can't remember if I caught mine the first day. I don't think I did, though. I promise you, I will check the time stamp. You did. I, probably, I, <laughs> I guess I caught one the first day. I can't remember. Okay. All I'll right. look at the pictures. Hold on. So. Like the fact check it. <laughs> hey, we always fact check yeah. it. Always. You know? Always. We just spew things out, yep, and then we're we like, well, let's, well let's, let's rewind a little bit. Let me yeah. retract that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> let me fact check that after the podcast comes out. Never redact it. No, no. Um, so, Zion, how many steelheads have you caught, like, in your in your lifetime of catching uh, steelheads? Honestly, probably not a lot. Because usually when I go up, I probably catch probably, like, two to five. It's okay. not like my dad had probably one of the best – once in a lifetime experiences up there mm-hmm. when i was in college he went up on a trip by himself and it was just he was catching them non-stop he probably caught over like 20 fish within the first like couple of hours he was oh, up there shit. and they like, got to a point where he was like dude go in the live stream and watch me and i'm in the middle of class he kept on <laughs> he was spamming my phone like dude go in the live stream i'm hooking up i'm hooking up i'm like all right whatever i'm in the middle of class on my phone trying not to get caught and literally i see my dad fly fishing it literally was like Bam, I just see his hand goes up and he's walking back and I see him net the fish and everything. He walks up to the camera and holds it up and everything. I'm like, oh, this guy. <laughs> oh, God. So the live stream, are you saying like there was a lot, li- there's a live stream where. On this stream that we were fishing at Uncle John's campground. Like, yeah. The campground has, I think like three or four live streams. They face upstream and downstream and right where they're right, right off from where you can walk oh, in and they're okay. at water access. All right. So he was fishing in front of that. He was like, hey, yeah, check this out. He was like, yeah. look, and I found the hole, and they're coming up. And literally just the whole time, it was just one after another. It was unbelievable. That's sick. 
But usually when I go up, it's not like I'm I hook into like a bunch of fish. It's mm-hmm. most because every time you go up, it's a completely different water condition. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been up there. It's like oh, it's like last time we're gonna be on them. Yeah. So I've gone up there and the water was super low, and the fish that were already in there's been there for a few days because the water was too low. They can't make their run or go mm-hmm. back. So it's like they're super line shy. They were literally I've seen a school of fish like 50 fish and i've cast my line out and literally they just parted away and came right back they literally would go right around your line and everything it was in- it was insane man and that's the, the hardest fi- that's the hardest fish and when you know the fish know everything yeah because at that point you're literally at the downsize what do you mean by downsize so typically when you're up there for a steelhead you can typically throw a pretty decent size hooks probably like a size 10 12 hook with mm-hmm. a egg pattern something big and flashy or whatever and they'll hit and eat that any day but that day when they're super low and they're super pressured you have to go down to like a size 20 22 you get the down it's, it's like smaller than your your pinky nail yeah, like, like s- smaller than that yeah. they're they're tiny yeah like super small super yeah. small and then on top of that they see your line so you can't fish like a five pound fishing fly line you have to go down to like a like two, two and a half two and a yeah. half pound oh. test Wow. Yeah. And they're, all the fish in the hole are over 18 inches. So <laughs> you yeah. hook up, you're like, oh, my God, yeah. please don't Your break it. Your drag is completely down <laughs> as far as it can. If that fish runs, let it run. You're not pulling it in. You're letting it get tired, and then you're you're literally fighting that fish the whole entire time. See, okay, my non-fishing brain, when you have a small hook like that, and that's like a bigger – it still has like a bigger fish, right? Yeah. So, like, in my mind, it's like you need a bigger hook for that. So, like – I imagine with those small hooks, pinky size, like it, it's going to, sometimes you're going to like think you have one, you're going to try and hook it or set it and then you won't like it will rip out or like it won't hook. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. So, it's, it still functions the same. Yeah. 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 Okay. I don't think I've had any different from fishing big flies to little flies. The kind of fish is all the same. Yeah. For the most part, most of my fish that I hook onto, I don't realize how I've hooked onto because I typically fish the drift so naturally. I kind of let if the fish is gonna take, it's gonna take. I fish till my line is tight and like um I can literally like I'm like oh I either got a rock or something. I like typically I fish off the bottom, so like I'm feeling everything. So like oh, okay. every month that I'm getting, I'm typically setting the hook a little bit yeah. and like testing where it's at. Yeah. This is most of my fish I catch. Like, if I hook onto something, if I hit a rock or something, I'll bump it, bump it, bump it. And, like, sometimes if the water's clear, you can see what's going on. So, like, most of my fish, like, if I, if I see it and, like, I hook onto them, I'll, I'll hit that bump and, like, they'll do a head shake because it hooked onto their mouth. So, like, if you hit it, if it's a good hook set, you'll know because they'll do this immediately. And you know you got them good. Yeah. Damn. I have so much to learn. You Honestly. should be taking notes. I should give you the notepad. You should be. <laughs> Ethan, you're the note guy. Take notes for me. Take taking notes. You can do it. No problem. <laughs> There's so much to fly fishing. It's insane. So you guys are fly fishing for these. Yeah. Yes. Right? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, uh, yeah. It was, it was all of us were fly fishing the whole time. My God. Yeah. We were trying to do it, like, properly. Like, get, getting the, the stream, or not the stream. The like entomology of the water, like yep. what bugs are in yeah, there, trying and to like hash, match the hatch and all that stuff. Yeah, it gets pretty rough. Start out natural and then yeah. work your way to like cheating a little the bit. Cheating with the cheating artificial sacks. egg, it's not cheating, but it's like it's basically as like a really good fly fisherman, you would love to t- use your own hooks that you tied and mm-hmm. like hatch patterns you find in the water and stuff that they naturally you would kind of want to like fish that first. Yeah, because that's just you feel a lot more better about yourself. But there's points where it's like. They're not taking it, and you're like, all right, I'm throwing an egg pattern on or an egg sack. I'm throwing a minnow on my line. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever we got here to get it in. Like, you get a, you get a little desperate sometimes. It happens. You have them days. You have them weekends, but it's whatever. Hey, go to a spinning rod. I've never bought a, a spinning rod up there, though. That Good for you. Because, uh, well, we're going to get into a segment later that we talked about. The... Uh, I don't the, recall. The termer phrase that has oh. made the industry better or worse. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Yeah. yes, yeah. Well, why don't we just hop into that? I mean, now? sure. You brought it up. Yeah. Oh, I did. Ethan yeah, would like another beer. beer. Give me a beer. Andrew please. is is the beer guy. The beer, the beer guy. bitch. <laughs> the beer bitch. So this before we get in that segment, let's let's finish up with this trip here. That's fine. Um, how what's the limit on steelheads? Like, is there a limit on them? I or believe it's three. Three. Yep. A day. Or yeah, three, okay. Three a day, I'm pretty right. sure. I don't okay. know the possession limit. But that I'm trip, sure we know, was three. the first time I've kept fish. Really? I don't, I fit in most of the, I catch and release most of my fish I ever catch. See, that is, like, I've, I've realized that talking to fly fishermen, like, that's the, like, 
the thing that they do is they catch and release. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's, I mean, you know, that's fine. Like I have no issue with that, but as long as the fish is fine enough to swim away. Correct. You know, Um, it's the mindset of the sport. I mean, like if you're doing everything natural, like, oh, I want my hook to look like something that lives in the water versus someone that goes in and throws, no offense, no offense to these people, but throws like a spoon in there that literally is just shiny to piss them off. Mm -hmm. Like it's a, it's a very different mindset. I feel like a lot of fly fishermen, like Cal, who we had on a couple weeks ago, weeks, Weeks. months ago. I think it was a year ago. (laughs) Jeez. It's been a a year. Like (laughs) Cal is, Cal is like up there on the fly fishing scale. And I don't think he's ever kept a fish. Uh, I think he said he kept one. His whole when he was really whole, young, yeah. When yeah. his whole, you know, yeah. but that's you know, yeah, that's that. I mean, it's it's, it's two very different things. Oh, absolutely. Like you got your your hicks that go into the woods trying to fill the freezer, and mm-hmm. then you got the the old guys going out just to mm-hmm. enjoy themselves. And Ethan, I mean, well, call me a hick. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> why don't you? Because I'm going back with a stringer full of fish. <laughs> How did I know that was coming? How did I know that was Hold coming? On, I'm saying, saw it. Why are you talking about me? <laughs> Hold on, man. My ears ringing. I'm yeah. in the same fucking room. <laughs> Dude. I'm right in the middle. Don't feel bad. Don't, Don't feel yeah. bad. But see, I'm not. I'm also not. A, I'm not a fly fisherman either. I've never well, I mean, been fly right. fishing. You also obey the rules. Correct. Like there are people oh, that yeah. go out there, like. Dude, the one post that you saw, I don't know if it was Reddit or whatever, but the uh, Middle Eastern European people who were up there and got caught by PA fishing boat oh, yeah. for having like no licensing yeah. over the limit. No license. The worst, when we were up in New York, people got caught because they were keeping fish in the fly fish and catch and release only section. <laughs> oh my God. Like, how dumb are you? Yeah. Dude, someone, someone ended up calling the calling fish and boat on they came up and the dude they took the people's fish and all that stuff and then i guess they were being assholes to the cops and they're like you know what we'll take all your shit they took their poles their net their vest their weight they took all their fish and stuff the fish and everything oh mm-hmm. oh my god it was insane that's kind of like i mean that's kind of like poaching where they like they take the weapon that you used yep they take like, the game exactly it is the, exact the same, same thing, yeah. thing. But do they do, do they do normally? Like, do they take your pole? Do they take everything like yeah. that? Like, okay. I mean, some it's police ethics. Mm-hmm. So, like, most some cops are really cool. Like, all right, mm-hmm. listen, you do if you if you really didn't know. I mean, we'll cut you some slack this time. Like, whatever, right. we'll take your fish. Now you know you're in a fly fishing only section. Yeah. That's catch and release. Don't keep the fish. Put it back. <laughs> you know the funny. It'd be a funniest picture. I didn't know. And there's a sign right next there's to him. There's a sign right, <laughs> like the main entrance to walk to the street. And there's like three signs, and it tells you everything. It tells you what fish are in the water. It tells you it's catch and release only. It's fly fishing section, upper section one. It tells you the whole nine. <laughs> well, in their defense, they might not have been able to read. <laughs> Apparently, I'm just trying to defend. Yeah, it. yeah. Don't Maybe defend them. Everyone, everyone needs to be defended them. sometimes. <laughs> yeah. They all need someone in their corner, yeah, right? Yeah, right. No. Give them the same <laughs> attitude that you hold towards poachers. Oh, fuck them all. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't know that was illegal to shoot a spike. <laughs> I didn't know this at all. Well, there's a sign right next to you. Don't there's do a it. whole book anyway. of regulations. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, okay. So, the limit's three. Um, so out of the six of you, how many did you catch all together? Uh, I think the first day we only came, came in with like three total. Okay. Your dad, Austin and you. I think, yeah, that was me. And then I almost limited the second or third day we were there. Yeah. Second day. I yeah. think. Second day. I did good the one day cause it was, wasn't as bad as weather, but it yeah. was still cold. Mm-hmm. And I think that day, I think you caught you caught your one fish. My yeah. dad caught two fish, and I think that was it. That was probably our best day we had. We caught like five the one day. Wow! But it was just extreme. The weather conditions were yeah. hard to fish. Yeah, it was brutal. It was cold. The fish were very slow. I would say when it's cold like that, they're a lot slower in the water. It is not slow. It's hard to describe. I think a lot of it's uh, things that I don't understand. Like the lunar cycle has things to do with it. You're talking and moon, yeah, yeah. I, oh yeah. Oh god, I don't know. What it's it's, it's funny because it's we have a, my dad. We have a friend up at the uh, cabin. They stay there for like six months out of the year, and then the other six months they're down in Florida. 
the guy likes to trout fish up there. And he was telling my dad the one day, like, oh, it's going to be a full moon tonight. Go fishing tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And dad's like, dad doesn't pay attention. He's like, is the weather fine? I'm going to go fishing. Like, that's just, you know, I'm the same way. <laughs> Weather's good. I'm going fishing. He's like, dude, it's going to be a full moon tonight. Go fishing tomorrow. You're going to have a good day fishing. Mm-hmm. So we go fishing. We had a good day fishing. This guy plays the moon for trout. Have you ever gone out on a lake for bass at midnight on a full moon? No. I've heard stories. You catch big bass on a full moon. Are they close to the top? I have no idea. I've heard stories. My brother did it one time. Oh. He did really good. We're going to have to test this out. we got to know all the full If moons. any of the listeners out there have gone fishing on a full moon, DM us, email us. One I've heard two. it. We I've never done it, but I've heard it. And every time someone tells me, like, yeah, it's true. you got a boat, right? Me. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do this. Test it out ourselves. Yeah. Let's test it. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm down. I mean, I'm always down to fish anyway. But... I know you are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I catfish at night, but oh, yeah. my biggest catfish I've caught right before sundown. Yeah. Yeah, I fish, that I fished the Susquehanna for flatheads. Oh, yeah. They, there's some big fish in there. Oh, yes. Some real big catfish in there, for sure. 50 pounders. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think my biggest boys. was almost 48. <sighs> yeah. That was a fight. Yeah, it was. Yeah. What was funny is I didn't realize I had it on, and I'm sitting there. My dad's like, yo, you're, you know your line's upstream. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I looked up. <laughs> Shit me not. My line had the biggest slack line in it. <laughs> Oh and I'm sitting there reeling it in, and it's getting closer and it's closer. And literally, the catfish came right up to the boat, and once it saw the, it saw us, it went. It fucking took off. No, that was you. real cool. Would you ever noodle for a catfish? Up here, probably down really? south. No, because they got okay. all them gators. Well, yeah, I wouldn't. I see. I'm just afraid like it's gonna. I don't know. I, I just, just won't. I just don't. I I've I catfish a lot, so it's like I'm comfortable. Like their mouth, nothing. It's literally a bar of sandpaper to me. Yeah, that's all it really is. Is their teeth? Like they don't have teeth. Yeah, I'm not worried about their teeth. I'm more worried about like them like breaking my arm. I guess. Oh. Uh, I guess that's my biggest fear. I don't you know. Got a weak arm. I'm finding. I don't out. know. I don't know. <laughs> find I don't want to find, find out. out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you drink your milk? If I knew someone that was really good, I don't know how people would do it because that's like that's something I have no idea. Like that's just something yeah. you need to be taught as a kid. Like that's something passed down through the family. I've yeah. never seen people just go out and start noodling for catfish. Well, there's the there's the Jameses family of noodlers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sounds actually really yeah. wrong, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'd be trying to, I'd be worried about reaching my hand in somewhere and. It's not a catfish. Big old snapping turtle. Yeah, like yes. a snapping turtle up here. No, thank you. Snap yes. or a oh or a snakehead. <gasps> I don't know if they're, they're dangerous. They're they got some nasty. They got some teeth. nasty teeth on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no thanks. Mm-hmm. I, would just, I don't think uh, they have holes. I don't think snakeheads have holes. No. Like tur- like snapping turtles, I think they do. They bury themselves Maybe. in the mud. I don't know. I'm not a big. Well, like, even like. What is it like the shelves on the side of the banks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every fish goes into them things. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Plus, you do you really want to get into like the Susquehanna River? Like physically go in it? Do you really want to? Fuck no. It's kind of gross. It's, it's kind of gross. <laughs> you'd be walking on three feet of water and dropping the twenty-five. Yeah. <laughs> or you'll just sink in the mud. One of the two. <laughs> yeah. Or you'll suddenly grow ovaries. Based I mean, on those, we we have that. I have story one kid already. To... <laughs> <laughs> so it's like birth control. Yeah. Um. So back to steelheads. Um. Get back there. <laughs> so describe the fight of these fish, because like the way like that picture that um that size fish right there Andrew has. What size fish is that, Andrew? That'd be like... Uh, that was two foot. Is that two foot? 24 inches. So, how was the fight on, like, those fish compared to, like, a, just a normal trout? Well, back home, or what it, I call them stockies, but I call them bucket trout. And bucket fish. Bucket <laughs> trout. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, you can get a good fight on a bucket trout, but it's uncomparable to that. Okay. All they're right. a lot more. They're a lot more fresh, live, and they'll put they'll put a run up for your money. I've hooked on to a lot and lost a lot of them. And snapped yeah. a lot of lines and all that stuff, but depends. Sometimes you sometimes you get well. The problem is 
most of the fish I hook onto, they're really aggressive and they fight. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if you fish it right, you get lucky and you get them to your bank quick enough, you can you can net them. Yeah. That's the problem. If you have someone that's netting, netting really good. So my dad usually does a good good time, good job netting. Yeah. This past year, he's been real rough with me. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I love my dad to death. And it literally, like, this year killed him. Like, he usually does a good job netting and, like, it hurt him this year because I lost a monster coho in New York. Like, textbook, most beautiful. Like, it was, like... Damn near like almost probably almost a ten pound coho. Oh my god! And it was like the purple, the red, like textbook color. And like you could take your glasses off and see it. It was the most beautiful oh. fish ever. Mm. Hooked y'all too. Yeah, dude, it was amazing. Mm. It literally like it came up to the bank like four or five times. But it was like my dad was like trying to net it every time he stepped in the water. It was like took off and it chased me downstream for like 10, 15 minutes. Went through the nastiest rapids down a waterfall and it hit into this. I don't know how it didn't break off when it went down. Like it was like a two, three foot drop, and I still had my line on, and it literally was like in this big pool, and I'm sitting there holding it, and just like it was just sitting there. When fish find deep water, they just go down and they just yeah. sit, and it did that, and literally my line just went. Oh man! Mm. <laughs> oh my god! It was insane. Wow. <clears throat> but yeah, the fight on the, all the fish are good. It's just it comes down to once you have it on, yeah, drag set, how you're fishing it, having your pull the what would it be called i forget side pressure side pressure everything it comes mm -hmm. down to you and being able to bring the fish towards you okay all right hmm. and if it's a good hook set if you have it in its mouth on a good spot on its tongue the top of its mouth on the side fish don't like it yeah if you have it good on the mouth and the inside of the mouth they will come to you no matter what like if you can side pressure it'll come right to you oh damn and if you have it like if you have it in a weird spot they'll just they'll run for you run you for your money hmm Hey, Ethan, you taking notes? Oh, yes. Yeah, so like, <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Learning some stuff. Because, uh, like, like I said, like, my dad went to Pulaski to hunt, or hunt, to fish. <laughs> hunt, hunt, fish. For salmon, hunt for salmon. <laughs> to fish for salmon. At, well, heck, at this point, almost 40 years ago. And we've always talked about going. My mom's like, you should take the boys, you know, salmon fish and go. And we've always wanted to go, and we've just never done it. So now it's like, I want to go. I want to do this. It looks so much fun. You have to do it. Salmon's a whole other experience. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you take that and times it by two, three. That's what I want. It's I want to go salmon. Fly fishing for. I don't know how the hell you go out there every year and fly fish for them. It's ridiculous. You hook on to them and it's just. <laughs> <laughs> so you can only fly fish for salmon. No, you can. Oh, no. People okay. spin. Most okay. people spin fish for bait casters. Just kidding. I don't. <laughs> You'd be surprised. You see some. You see some shit up there. I've seen a surf rod up there. What? I've seen a surf rod up there. Oh my! Like just put it in there. Like okay, I'm just way to go. Most pe people come up there and they goof around. So you see a lot of dumb shit up there. It's funny. So if I walked up there with a spinner and a bobber, would I get looked at like? No, I'm like, not what at the? all. Okay, good. No, not at all. All right, because that's what I'm, what I'm gonna do. Depends if you fish with him or not. So I don't right. know. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. if I go with Zion, I'm gonna be doing that. Yeah. Then you'll be making. Then, then you'll the be made fun nothing of. wrong with it. Hey. I'll take it. Worth well, it. We've told Austin. Austin brought up a spinning rod with them because yeah. it's one of the things. Like, that was his first trip up there fly fishing. Mm -hmm. Like we had taught him how to fly. Not taught him, but we went out and fished like two times before we went up there just so he can understand like mm -hmm. getting his cast down, learning how to fish a, fished water, the streams, and the speeds of different water and rapids yeah. and all that stuff. So he went up there and did really good. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I've, I've been fly fishing for what, like, I don't know, six, seven years. And your dad, Zion, was like, what is he doing? Like, apparently I was casting, like, real hard. And, yeah. Like, I just, I don't even have the knowledge or the experience with steelhead yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's something different that you, you could fish bucket trout, as you'd say, all day. Yeah. And it's, it's very different. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, hey, I got to piss. I do, too. So we're going to take a break, and we're going to be right back <laughs> to a beer tasting yes. and continue the episode. Hey, son, did I show you the butcher shop at my place when you were over? I don't think so. All right, you're going to have to come over at some point. but Or no, you did. It's, on, it's downstairs. Yeah. Like, back, the left yeah. side. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's really nice. We're, we're going to do a podcast at some point <laughs> where... My dad's like cooking up stuff, and we're gonna do a tour of like our butcher shop and That's pretty cool. and what we normally do. That's right. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. That's what, yeah. That's what we're gonna do. So who wants to bring us back in? Ethan. And we're back to the BCPA game show. What do we have today? Beer. Beer. Oh, we <laughs> beer. 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 And the crowd goes wild. I wish I knew which button was clap. <laughs> you, yeah, which one? You gotta start playing with Should them I a little test more. Should I it out? 
Do See which it. one is. Oh, First try. That, that sounded really bad. They both sounded bad together. <laughs> All right, sicko. If you close your eyes. Wow, that's too quick. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, hey, that was the the salmon, floppy salmon. Yeah. yeah. Awkward salmon. Awkward salmon. Awkward that's what it was. I haven't done it in a while, it. so yeah, I apologize. All right. You're having a apologize. kid. I apologize. W- I would expect you're not doing that to random people. Right. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Anyway, let's get to it. Yeah. Beer tasting. So, uh beer. I brought some victory today. Um thank shout out to Father Dan if you're listening. I doubt it, but thank you. Oh, this um, is scary. We got Hop Devil. Wait, a, f- a priest. Yes, a priest. You Hop Devil. Yep. Ironic, right? That is very ironic. Very ironic. I'm here for it. He did yes. bless our meal before we ate it. That's and good. it was phenomenal. Um, but yes, he did bring bless Hop this Devil. Hop Devil in front of us. So let's let's yes. conquer this Hop <laughs> Devil by cr- drinking it. <laughs> what kind of cross sign was it? You just went across your stomach like, bless this. <laughs> I just looked at my nipples. That's <laughs> well I did. Cody hasn't been to church in a couple of years. It's okay. Yeah, probably. I would say a couple of years. Yeah. yeah. I would say that. Been there. The woods is my church. <laughs> <laughs> I find God outside. Uh, God's yep. country. Yep. Anywho. Hey. 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 God's <laughs> country. So, victory. <laughs> Hot devil. Good to do. Six point seven percent ABV. Mm-hmm. Um, we got what looks like a a hop with two earrings and some horns on it. Uh, interesting decal, but uh, let's get to it. Ethan, hey, pine and citrus aromatics from American hops are balanced with malt sweetness, culminating in bold hop flavors with. Ample caramel undertones and a full bodied finish. It's really, it's white on a blue, which is kind of hard to read in this lighting. Yeah, I was wondering why not you're stuttering, or not stuttering, Hooked but on just Phoenix, like, man. Talk. On phonics. <laughs> or is it phonics? Phonics. Hooked Hooked on phonics. phonics. There we go. I knew what See, you were saying, but it was funny. <laughs> that's that's how far away I am. Car- you say caramel? <laughs> caramel. Yeah, caramel. 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 Caramel, caramel. I know there's an extra A in there, but yeah. Our hops are Cascade and Centennial, and uh, Brewmasters Bill and Ron approve. Hey, Bill and Ron, Bill thank and Ron. you. Yeah, Thanks, Bill and Ron. We appreciate it. <laughs> Shall we? Yep. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Oh, that was. Oh man, oh, we gotta start doing that right there. We gotta start <laughs> doing that more. Oh God! Mm. <laughs> I haven't made a, I haven't made a face while drinking a beer in a while. Mm. It's a classic IPA. Want to pull that mic a little closer to your face, there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I feel like this one's gonna get a really low score. I don't know. I mean, it could, but I I just I don't I don't know. Mm. Ethan, you want to start us out? Oh, okay. Oh, oh what? <laughs> the second gonna... one's a little better. <laughs> okay. Than the first. I didn't even take a second yet. <laughs> oh, I could hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, you want Ethan? You want to explain the beer tasting? Yeah. To Zion. Yeah, so we didn't do that. Break it down for me. Break it first. I'm like right next to him. We're breaking this down. You're next. Get ready. No. No, So the beer tasting is obviously you drink a beer and then you tell us if you like it. Put on clearly, and you tell us you like it on a scale of zero to ten, and you can get decimals specific as you would like. Well, how would you break down your scale to one to ten? On the one to ten, we'll get that. We have a thing called the lower law. And the lore law, shout out to Cody's mother in law. Um Laura Beck. Yes, that one. <laughs> With two E's. Yeah. All right. Some may say beak. beak. Some beak. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. But if you would rate the the beer you're drinking over a five, that means you would drink it again. 
But if you would give it a score of under five, that means you would. This is the last time you would ever drink it. And then after we give a rating, we go around and say, "Would you drink this at camp? Whether it's hunting camp, fishing camp, or just camp camp." <laughs> Camp 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 camp, 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 camp. Can you do the camp, 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 get away, <laughs> camp, get away. So, <sighs> hmm, I don't taste the caramel. The caramel. I don't get that. Well, it says ample caramel undertone, so that's so just enough. It's not much anywhere. Yeah, I'm struggling with that. Yeah, I'm struggling. I'm not gonna lie, like I'm sure some beer beer <clears throat> taster will taste it, but not me. Yeah. Apparently, Bill and Ron did. Bill and Ron approve. <laughs> they did. <laughs> Bill and Ron. Always tasted something. There's really. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I still my my palate is not refined enough. Yeah. That I I don't taste a huge difference between like any IPA that I drink other than how much of an IPA does it taste like more or less I go I just kind of scale right. it on that all this, IPAs kind of taste the same yeah but this tastes you just have that like aftertaste slightly less IPA e mm-hmm. <laughs> IPA e yeah are you adding uh, an e after IPA e or e. IPA Nest. Quotate E. <laughs> IPA Nest. I, I, I didn't want to bring that up again. IPA Nest? IPA Nest. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. I already made that mistake on yep. the past episode. And you did. I did it again. <laughs> Painus. <laughs> um, this is a little less, I think, All for right. me personally. Okay. Um, <sighs> Bubbling. I can't say it. I don't want <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't buy it. But, like, if giving if someone just hands this to me it's like my only option to drink i could probably drink a second one mm-hmm. i mean it would not willingly but but it's I, in your fridge but if it's in my fridge and that's all i got then yeah i'll, I'll grab it not mm-hmm. a big deal but it's it's not going to be high i mean i'm talking 5.1 mm. like like it's not okay all right it's, this is a 5.1 so the only me. option would be like someone gives it to you yeah, like I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going to store and buying this. I'm not going to order this at a bar. So, okay. I I don't know if I consider that. Well, no, it's your own rating. I don't really. I'm not going to judge your rating. I'm going to care. Yeah, no, we're, that's what we're here for. We're judging. We're judging. Gonna, you know what? We're I'm going to judge the shit out of it right now. Judge the shit out of it. Let's see your scale. Let's, so, let's, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah. So if you're if you're saying that someone gives it to you, yes. First of all, the best beer is a free beer. So anyone gives me a beer. I'm on the same pattern as him. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm riding right. down his road. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think I would go out and buy this. Yeah. But if it was there, I had no problem drinking this. Yeah. Like, it's not a bad beer. It's just like, I'm not tasting anything special with this. Like, yeah. I'm not getting any flavor profile from this at all. <laughs> it's like, like a It is IPA. a classic IPA. Like, yeah. The bottle says there's stuff there. I'm not tasting anything. <laughs> 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 like, I've had IPAs where it's like, okay, I'm kind of tasting something. Like, it's pretty, it's. There's something going on with this one's just like it's just I don't even know. Yeah. Bill, Ron, where's the fucking caramel at? I'm just tasting. <laughs> That's what I yeah. want. Like I'm not gonna lie, I'm like low key disappointed that like but again, like I don't drink IPAs. Right. So like people that drink them all the time, like that they could probably pick that out. Mm-hmm. And they would know, like, oh yeah, I can taste the the no. uh what is it? The ample caramel undertones. You with your now you gotta say it like someone who I can taste this uh, little <laughs> this caramel here as it goes in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Like I can't no, I can't do it. like no. It just yeah. tastes like an IPA. Just not as s- strong. I think Andrew had to pee again. That IPA's going right through him. <laughs> So that's why I would give it a five point one. Like I don't, I don't, wouldn't buy it. But if like handed it to me, that's what the and, one is, and if that's what that there, one is. You would get it. I get that. I see where yeah. you're coming no. from. That's yeah. it. That's really it. Okay. That's, that's why. So it's not like I would. Yeah, like if I would give it like a four point nine, like I would finish this beer, and then if someone would give me this, I'd be like, no, go away. Yeah. If you don't... Oh my god. Oh, that was. Yeah, it's bubbling. IPA, it's coming man. up. It's lurking. Dude. It just it gets sits you there. It just, Dude, oh, it's oh. like you want to talk about oh. meal replacements. It's not like a good beer burp where it's like it's there no. and it just comes out. Like this shit sits for a minute. I mean, first of all, beer burps aren't the best to begin with. Yeah, and like to have an IPA beer burp, 
dude. Mm-hmm. It's a straggling it's, burp. It's, it just it's lurks like, up. Yeah, and it stinks too. You can smell that it stinks. Like, <laughs> like oh god. Like it's, it's, it doesn't feel good at no. all. It's like oh man, that was a good beer. Really hit home. Yeah. Nope. Nope. All right. So, okay, five point one. Five point one. You drinking at camp? Anything like that? Oh, I would hope no one brings it to camp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I just wouldn't because yeah. I'm not bringing it to camp mm-hmm. personally I'm not bringing it to camp. yeah that's not this isn't my version of a camp beer it's like a it's like a nightcap kind of I feel like it would be a good nightcap beer yeah like, like you're I've... already almost there yeah and like you just drink this and then you're like okay I'm ready to hit the hay now yeah. that or it gives you the spins I don't <laughs> <laughs> Give me... I feel One like I should two. be at like a hole in the wall like hipster kind of bar Drinking, Debs. drinking this thing. Debs. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't think... See, I can say it now because like, I'm not going to be going to that cabin anymore. So I can s- officially say. And not blank out Debs. Right. We love Debs. Rest in peace. All right, Pete. She's still alive. Just. <laughs> I not... think Deb is still alive. I, I don't hope know. so. <laughs> I don't Jeez. know. I don't know. Poor Deb. All right. Zion. I'm kind of on the same boat as him. Yeah. I would not buy this ever again. <laughs> would never buy this. I didn't buy it, bro. <laughs> I, yeah. It was gifted. Well, yeah, we not even gifted. It was that. left. Yeah. yeah. And now I kind of know why it was left. Yeah, it's not that great. The beer is a beer. If it's free, I'm going to try it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But this just had nothing exquisite to it. Yeah. Like, it wasn't nothing that hit me like, oh, it was pretty good. I don't know. Nothing was pretty good. Like you said, if five point. Five point one's where it's at. Like if someone gave it to me, I'm like I'm sitting there, like oh, I'm out of beer or something. I'm like fuck it, I'll drink it. It's yeah. not bad. It's definitely not a bad beer, but it's just like it ain't a good beer. It's not a good beer. It's in a weird spot. <laughs> yeah, it's like a generic kind of IPA. Like this is a ge- as generic as it could be. Yep. Yep. There's nothing to it at yeah. all. No, nothing. Yeah, I would probably say 5.1. 5.1? 5.1. All right. Um, so would you drink it at, at camp? Hell no. <laughs> hell no. <laughs> hell no. That's, that's what we like. Yeah. Um, man, I kind of... I I don't even want to say, like, if someone hand this to me, I'd drink it. I, I just... I don't feel like I would drink it. Like, it's... I would have to be pretty much at rock bottom. Like, you have nothing. Right. There's, like, n- literally nothing else to yeah. drink. It's, so like, like oh, I this. this. You want this? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yep. So, I think we're going to go 4.7. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I, just, I don't know. It just, and I know I would not drink at camp, obviously. No. Unless, Insane. literally, like I said, like, it was the only thing someone brought to camp, which, why would someone be like, hey, I really like this victory hop devil. I'm just going to bring this to camp. And this is the only thing we have. He might not be invited to camp next yeah. year. Yeah. It's like. Uh, he, <laughs> is he bringing that and saying he likes that? I'm like, oh, come on now, dude. <laughs> he, gets like, <laughs> he gets four six packs of hop devil and brings them to camp. And that's literally fucking it. And it's mm-hmm. like, dude. I'd rather you bring hams. You're kicked out. <laughs> I would rather you bring hams at this point. Put that shit back in the yeah. I am not. I'm drinking water. Yeah. I'm drinking water. Drinking water. Andrew. Chocolate milk. Now, before he goes, you said a 4.7. Yeah. And off of the scale, you said below a 5. You mm-hmm. wouldn't get it again. Mm-hmm. Correct. But you said if it was offered <laughs> at rock bottom, you would drink it. Well, okay. Okay, so I wouldn't drink it unless it's literally the only thing. So it's the only thing that I have. Like, like I don't even have okay. water to drink. Yeah. Dude, if, if your options are water and hop devil and you don't have the water option, I would not drink the hop devil. I'm just saying, like, if I need something that possibly could get me rehydrated, maybe I'll drink this. This, this ain't it. This ain't it. This, this ain't, ain't it. it. This is going like, like, to kill you quicker. You're going to throw up after drinking that. If you're dead, dead, <laughs> down that for water. I'm dehydrated this and all that kind of stuff. Give me up, devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I, I see where you're coming from, but yeah, it's like last resort. Yeah. Like dead last. Like I feel like maybe yeah. should maybe I should go lower than a four point seven. Yeah. Then. You think I should go four lower than a four point seven? If the way you present it, I could see it lower than four point seven. Yeah, the way like, you're talking about it, like you're right. talking like this is like two range. Yeah. Okay, then <laughs> but two I mean, point two point eight. Two no hesitation. Damn, no that hesitation. was that Bro, was. There was no hesitation on hey, that one. Oh my gosh! Straight from hey, the throat. 
Don't come it, at me. Said, come Fuck at that. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I could. I would definitely drink it if it was like I was at a party. Like I said, I was like, if someone presented it to me, and I didn't mm-hmm. have nothing. I'd drink it, no problem. Like whatever. Yeah. It's a beer. Yeah. But it's not. It's not terrible. Like yeah. for you, you just, the way you're presented, like you, it's just nothing about it is good at no. all. Like it's just an average. Mm-hmm. It's just an average, basic, generic, like default IPA. <laughs> Put it this like, way: <laughs> if we had a bigger studio that had a stu- a, a, a just a spot where you throw a beer. Just be like, this is fucking trash. Oh yeah, I would throw this it. This would go there. Yeah, I would throw it so hard at that wall. And like, like, this is trash. If anyone from Victory is listening to this, just know that there are beers that you have that we do like. Oh, <laughs> it's just, oh, yeah. it's just makes, this one. Yeah, yeah, it's, this one's yeah. Because we're just like shitting on them right now. Yeah. We've Don't, done at least two other victories. Don't they have before. a sour monkey? Yeah, sour yeah, monkey. We've, sour done, monkey. we've done oh, that one. Yeah. God, yeah, drink oh, yeah. that. Yeah, hundred times out of hundred. You had that in the fridge for the longest time. Yeah. I think I still have some victory in there, actually. Oh, yeah. We say we've done no, a handful yeah. of victory ones. It was right? Hop it's, Devil. You had it? Hop Devil in the fridge. Well, that's why I wasn't drinking. That, yeah. yeah. That's why oh, victory is still in the fridge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why I wasn't drinking. Uh, Andrew, I did not like that look you just gave me, by the way. It was like an evil look. Yeah, I don't uh, know what it was. Devil, it was like, we're all getting mad. This shit's making us angry. That's why it's called Hop Devil. Is that Hop Devil? It's fucking torture. It's making us all mad. <laughs> Didn't Andrew, meet me outside. It's an angry beer. <laughs> Didn't bless it enough. <laughs> no. Um, bless this beer before us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, if anyone from Victory is here, you can contact me at, at my local number. Um, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed with this one. Who made this? <laughs> Rob. Listen. No, Ron. <laughs> Bill and Ron, you guys should set your approval standard higher. Yeah, seriously. I'm sorry. If this is what you were aiming for. Piss poor. Cool. You made it, but don't don't mass produce it. Mm. Just produce them in like those little hipster four packs that are like ridiculously expensive for the people yeah. that actually want it. Mm-hmm. Don't mass produce it. Yeah. This beer has no it's, purpose. It's no. like some beers, like if you're doing something in life, like if you're doing an activity, like a beer, a perfect beer for that activity, I can't find a purpose for this beer. Now, do you think an IPA <clears throat> is an activity um, beer? Like like an IPA um, condesor. Condesor. Condesor? Yeah. Dinosaur? You're right. Sure. You said condesor. Like, like I a, got what you meant. You I, know, I don't yeah, know I if you said you. it wrong, but I understood what you meant. Okay. I know what you right. saying. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure we, yeah, boy this are great. Just, just disregard. <laughs> um, but <laughs> an IPA condesor, I feel like they would really know. They would hit all the like scents. On oh this yeah, thing. like it tells you exactly the yeah. hops and the, everything in it. So they sure they, they might like, taste everything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're right in there. They know it. <laughs> they're doing the whole mouthwash, the gargle, yeah. and everything. Like, yeah, it's there. Like they'd be down to <laughs> like the beer starts here. They'd be down to here. Yeah. Like, and, and they'd be like, oh, man, I taste all that flavor. Oh. oh. All that oh. flavor all over your mouth. <laughs> what? I didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's move forward. I'm going to read this thing. So. Do you take the. I'm I'm an IPA guy. That's you I are. I, I, drink, I drink a He's good a amount of IPAs. <laughs> I'm not a connoisseur. You're a dinosaur. <laughs> I, I might be. <laughs> I might be, depending on who you ask. But uh, so I ripped all the labels off this beer, so I don't have to look at shitty ass anymore. Sorry, Victory. Um, yeah. Logo's so it's just bad. out of pure disrespect, I'm gonna go four point nine. Just so it's right below the lower level. And you like Victory? I do. Yeah. Victory's based right out of right outside Westchester, where Zion and really? I go to school or yeah. went to school. So, uh, yeah, Victory, I'm sorry. I'm still going to give you Ooh, business. I'm going to buy your Sour Monkey. I'm going to buy your Cloud Walker. But I'm not going to buy this Hop Devil ever again. Well, luckily you didn't buy it to begin with. That's true. I was gifted it. <laughs> and can you return the gift? <laughs> yeah, can we return the bottles? <laughs> Father! <laughs> gift exchange. You're going to have to come to confession with me after giving me this. Yeah. Give me a confession. He drank two of them and was like, this is terrible. He drank one. So there's five? Yeah, left one at home. Oh, thank God. Yeah. I'm glad you're not put in the fridge. Because <laughs> it would have been there for a long you. time. Maybe Gentlemen, it gets better by age. I, I would hope so. I doubt it. Ooh, that was me. I just smacked this with the pencil. That was actually kind of cool. Mm. Can you do that again? Don't do it again. No, never mind. <laughs> do it again. <laughs> do it. 
<laughs> Bro, who do an ASMR? Sounds like a someone who doesn't know how to play guitar. <laughs> Which would be me. Fair. It's and me. Uh, <laughs> our hop devil <laughs> averages out to round up or round down? Up. Well, rounding rules. Rounds out to 4.5. Even with my 2.8. Yep. Wait, wait, wait. You did change it. He you did. did change it. Oh, so it's not a four point five. Oh. Ah. oh. The tables have turned. Yeah. You said 2.8? Yeah, 2.8. Did I? Yeah. Yes. You did? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? That's 4.5. Wow. Yeah. I thought it would have dropped down at least to a 3. I would have been satisfied with the 3. I would have been satisfied. Yeah. Now I'm not satisfied. <clears throat> That's all right. We need to make the studio bigger so we have a beer throwing corner. Yes. <laughs> You got a window, don't you? Well, they're covered up. You can guess. Yeah, it's fair. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Phew. Put a this window. This is shit. Put a window on the door. Yep. When I put a new door on. At some point. Anyway. It was warmer. So that was the beer tasting. Now, um, Andrew, you can take it away. Yeah. So uh, Fishing. on our last, was it the Predator? Conversation was the last. It'd be episode right? 126. Yeah. Uh, so we're episode 127 right now. Mm-hmm. Um, in our previous podcast, we discussed some terms or phrases that we feel had shifted um, the hunting slash fishing industry for mm-hmm. the better or worse. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I would like to introduce Ethan and my terms slash phrases that might worsen the fishing industry. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Sign going back to our steelhead trip. That some bitch that was flossing them fish and going back for a second stringer. And we're not talking about oh, the dance Oh, that guy. Yeah, that guy. Oh, that guy. Yeah. So, how do we feel about flossing slash snagging, as other people might call it? Ooh. Not the dance moves either. Not flossing. It's a hell of a technique. It is. <laughs> it is. Is one it ethical? Hell of a technique. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> you shouldn't do it at all. No. So explain um, flossing. So flossing is more of a New York term because when most people go up to New York, they fish for salmon. And when salmon run, they typically do not eat. They're running and they're going to lay eggs and they're laying sperm and all that stuff. They're produ- they're, they're going to reproduce yeah, and, and die. die. Oh, they're okay. not eating, so... Flossing, that's how flossing, I assume that's how flossing, the whole term of flossing comes up. So, New York's law is everything above the gill plate up, right? It's above, yeah, the whole head up. If you get your hook anywhere above the head, it's illegal. You can keep it, you can keep the whole fish. It's yeah. legal. It's legal. It came out sounding illegal. Oh, my but... fault. Yeah, it's legal. My fault. So, the term flossing, the whole idea on that is, is getting your line to cross the fish's mouth while it's open and getting the line to cross its come across its entire mouth and hook setting it. Okay. <clears throat> so it's a very it's all it's hard to learn. It's, it's an hard to do. Art form. It's a very but it's a unethical, unethical. art form. You wouldn't do it fishing anywhere in PA. Okay. Cuz you don't need to cuz if you're fishing for steelhead, you're fishing for buckets, if you're fishing for bass, there's you yeah. don't need to do it. They they bite. Your fish are biting. Right. It's also illegal. Yeah, it's to illegal. To snag fish in PA. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. So. Willingly. Purposely. Yeah. Purposefully. Did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. If you're if you're setting the hook real hard and you don't have something on your line, it's kind of obvious what you're doing. Yeah. When you're fishing a hole with eight guys for five hours and one dude rolls up and pulls three different kinds of fish out of a hole in mm-hmm. five minutes... You know what he's doing. Something's yeah. wrong. You know what he's doing. <laughs> Something's wrong. Huh. <laughs> I, yeah, I have to say I did not know that that was Ill- illegal in PA. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that listen to this that also don't know that that's illegal in PA. Well, so, they, like, they better fi- fix their fishing habits. Yeah. Sorry. That's right? I'm judging ta- you. People being taught wrong and not reading the book. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it really is. Everyone's mm-hmm. taught fishing through family or friends, so it's like not everyone knows. Some people are taught bad things. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was never taught that. Like, I mean, I mean, I don't really fish that much to say I do it, you know, but it's like, is that your stomach? That's my mouth. 
Wow. That was that yeah, IPA so coming back up. Just, hop yeah, devil. We are all just bubbly. Yeah, hop devil. That shit's creeping up. We are all just bubbly. Devil's say, smacking uh, back. Yeah. <laughs> it's talking but to no, us. <laughs> but no, like, when my dad was up in Pulaski uh, fishing for salmon, he goes, you, you, he'd go to these streams, and there'd be a divider, whether it was the the bridge or whatever it was. He goes, on tube. one, the two, on well, the tube's the underside. Gotcha. Yes, thank you. I'm learning, too. <laughs> if he goes, if you go to the one side... It would have to it, regular fishing, mm-hmm. but if you go to the other side, you are allowed to snag fish or floss. He goes, you're allowed, and depending on what side you're on, depend what you were allowed or not allowed to do. Mm-hmm. So, and that was the first time I've ever heard people like it's like, oh yeah, go over here and just go snag yeah. fish. Because New yeah. York has regulations on setups, because flossing is how most people fish. So, yeah, people found out, not found out, but. The perfect weight distance from your hook to where flossing is immaculate and it makes it a lot easier. They so have fine tuned. They this fine technique. tuned the weight and whatever they're using to perfectly. They can just drift it and whoop every time yeah. and perfectly floss the fish on its head every time. Wow! So they have like depending on what area the different areas of New York have different rules yeah. and they have net regulations. You can't have a net too big. What? Yeah, so they have net regulation, so you can't have a net that's really big. There's like certain width, depth, yeah. net deepness, and everything. Holy but shit! Like, yeah, you can't have your weights. I don't know. I don't hold me to this. I mm-hmm. know it's like three or four feet past. You can, it has to be within a certain amount of distance. Like, it's it's unbelievable. Oh my god, this is just certain, like a whole certain new world. Size hooks and everything. Yeah, if you see yeah. anyone pulling up, and New York with has like... no lead. You're not allowed to use lead weights up there. God bless them really? for that. Yeah. God bless him for no that. So weights. Yeah, wh- why, why, like, for the lead weights? Because I, I don't know, honestly, I don't know what I, kind of weights you I would have. Know. I'll, I'll field yeah. this one. Yeah, I appreciate that So, uh, <laughs> So you know your typical split shots, like a mm-hmm. small little pellet, right? Mm-hmm. And waterfowl will typically go down, dive for their, their whatever they're aiming for, right. little, little shellfish, minnows if they can catch them, whatever. So if they get that lead in them, Lead is a heavy metal. It puts off toxins into the body, which is where you get that whole lead poisoning idea from. Like, don't touch the pencil. It's got lead in it. Don't Don't inject it into your skin. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, like, um, if if you hunt waterfowl in Pennsylvania, you have to use steel shot or some other type of metal. You can't use lead shots. Mm -hmm. Steel steel foot shots are the worst. Yeah. Nothing compares to lead, though. Yeah. Lead, Lead is... The properties of lead are phenomenal. Lead is extremely heavy for for its size. It's very malleable, so you can chomp down on it yeah. with your teeth, and it, it forms to your tooth. But it's like probably not really healthy for anything around yeah. it that might ingest it. So that's that's the waterway protection coming into mm-hmm. into action. Um, I am I personally try to avoid lead. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not perfect with it. I would love to switch over to ceramics or whatever other options are out there. Uh, I think, was it green gremlin, something mm-hmm. gremlin, um, split shot. They make ceramics, um, highly recommend them. I'm going to switch over for next trout season, mm-hmm. uh, 2023. I'm going hey. to do that. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the issue with lead. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Because, I mean, obviously I knew of that for waterfowl. Yeah. But I know that was a thing for, I mean, I it makes sense mm-hmm. for, for fishing. Yeah. The, the, so ducks will ingest that. Yeah. Incidentally. And there mm-hmm. have been many documented cases where ducks have ingested lead and they, they did an autopsy on it and they're like, oh, that's not good. Yeah. The lead is, the lead is bad on top of many other issues, but lead is not helping yeah. anything so yeah i mean imagine like when a duck would ingest it you know it goes through their system they get that from the lead and then they also shit it out too so in turn might go towards the fish which then you know whatever eats that fish say like a hawk or an eagle or an owl or whatever like i mean they get it then and then they shit it out and then it grows into something else then a deer might get it then a bear might get it then it goes down the line with lead we call know? that biomagnification that's right i know that 
<laughs> I'm, okay. I'm actually I'm doing research on something similar to that with oh, microplastics. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I learned something similar when I was in my environmental crimes class. Oh, yeah? So, like, the government, how they did the whole DTT. DDT. DDT stuff. Yep. The agents where they sprayed it to kill all the mosquitoes. Mm-hmm. All that shit got into the ground, got into the worms. The birds were eating the worms, and it killed streams, it killed fish, and it killed a lot of stuff inside. Bald eagles. Yeah. That was, that was a huge reason that bald eagles declined yeah. was DDT. Really? Yeah, yeah, in the 60s and 70s. And I think I think the reform came in either the late 80s or the early 90s. You should 90s. see the videos. They were spraying the shit out of oh houses. Oh, my God. Dude, it was insane. Yeah. They were using it over in war and everything. That's, like, the, the reason, main reason they made it was for war because over – Viet- I forget where it was at, Vietnam or Pearl Harbor or whatever, because it was infested with mosquitoes. They were spraying it to kill all the bugs. Yeah, down south. Yeah, and down, yeah. Down and south. And then once they started using they started using it back home, and they were spraying communities and all the, everything, they're dumping powder sprays everywhere. You could buy it and spray it. Like, if you're having, like, a, a cookout at your house, you can yeah. go to the store, buy it, and spray it, kill all the mosquitoes, and you can have cookout have no problems. Holy shit. Yeah, so, like, this, this insecticide that they were using had something to do with uh like the calcium deposition and the bald eagle's eggs yeah so like their eggs were extremely fragile and they're just like non-viable mm-hmm. and you had a lot of bald eagles that weren't making it so that's why they were so protected for the longest time yeah and uh as of recent they've they made a great. huge comeback huge. comeback huge you see most everywhere yeah now it's like i forget where i saw the last one it was local to here there's a huge nest mm-hmm. Going to Cabela's. Yeah. So you know where Rudders is at? Huge. Right off Schuylkill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to Cabela's, mm-hmm. you're going through Hamburg. Yeah. And like that Rudders is to the right. Yeah. That field and like that, the tree line, mm-hmm. there's a huge eagle's nest. Like yeah. massive branches. It's insane. They're yeah. like six feet in diameter. <clears throat> oh. They're freaking yes. massive. I saw one in Illinois. When we were out in Illinois, I, I was sitting in that field. Really? And an eagle flew right in front of me. I was like, man, I wish I had my camcorder on me right yeah. now. We I saw had a juvenile one. fly right above me, a small, like a, a baby that's all black, white. It was like, yeah. wasn't even a bald eagle. It was like the whole color spectrum across mm-hmm. his back. It flew right over me. I was on my kayak. I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Say, yeah. so we saw one on the way out to Illinois. We were, I think we were in Ohio at that point. We had one fly. Yeah. It was like we went through like. No, we might have still been in Pennsylvania because we went through the the tunnels going under the mm. mountains. It was Pittsburgh, like the, yeah. It was like the last one mm-hmm. that we went through, and then we okay. had a bald eagle's bed. It's like that's a bald eagle, <laughs> <laughs> and that voice too. <laughs> We're pretty close because oh he was he was god. driving because wow. it was low. It's like, a bald eagle. Oh my god! Because <laughs> he was like, Dark, America. That, that's a good sign. That's a, that's a good sign right there. That's a that's a good omen right there, dude. I the good omen sing. I saw like. Four fucking shooting stars on the way out. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was a good open for my dad. Yeah, he got one. He got he got yeah. a deer. So some bitch. Yeah. Damn him. <laughs> so okay, so phrases. I guess we're we're going to the phrases now. Yeah, Is that so, what we're doing too? So, Ethan, I gave flossing. I think you had one relating to the fishing industry, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> I had, see, like, I don't get these vibes from you two, which is a good thing. Um, but I think just from, like, personal experience, when I hear catch and release only, I feel like there's, like, a, the the experiences that I've had. Now, that, like you said, there are plenty of good fishermen out there, right? I've had wonderful experiences with random strangers when I'm out fishing. But at the same time, I've also had instances when... I'd be out fishing, and there are people, the other people fishing, and the, catching the release only. But meanwhile, I'm catching trout, <clears throat> specifically for trout, and I'm keeping them. And I feel like a sense of judgment, like, oh, you're keeping these fish? Why can't you release them and let someone else catch them? Like, I feel like there's like a, but then again, this is just a, oh. Good, kind of good save on that That's one. It's a little messy. A little messy beer. Yeah, a little messy. Was but it was like it was almost like a LBC. like a like a judgy feeling. Like yeah, I yeah. felt like that. But again, like it was just a personal experience. I'm not going to speak on behalf of the whole fishing industry on that one. But like, I get that sometimes with the catch and release only. No, we judge. 
I know. <laughs> Damn it. The Fisher community judges. I figured. I, You're in a catch and release. Well, they have catch and release, and they have you can keep in some catch and release areas, too, during a certain season. They have, like, a three cruel, cruel what they, they call it a cruel limit or whatever. Creel. Creel, oh, whatever yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I, I would see people catch, uh, catch and release. People keep fish. I really don't mind. It's, it's up to you. If you're going to eat. The problem, with, it's not a problem. It's, like, ethically to me, it's, like, people that fish because they fit, they they fish and they keep fish, but they don't eat it. They're keep, they're. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to describe it, but it's, like, people that just love fishing so much they're out and they're keeping them. Mm-hmm. But they'll put them in their freezer and. Never eat them. Never fucking eat yeah. them. Yeah. See, like, so, I've eaten every, literally every single yeah. trout that I've caught. With, with I've like, eaten. with keeping them in your freezer, kind of like, I don't know, like, say you want to get them mounted. Like, they don't really have to be mounted. You don't have to keep them in a freezer to be mounted. You can take a picture of it. Oh, yeah. They'll mount it. You can get yeah. that picture, that fish mounted, no problem with just that picture alone right there. Yeah. Don't it is. You need to see the fish. It is 2023. <laughs> if you take a picture of your fish, and you get the specs on it, you find a good taxidermist, they will put together the most beautiful mount you've ever oh, yeah. seen. You yep. don't you don't have to keep them anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've I've kept a fish before and had it done up all nice and neat, probably like 2007 maybe. That was like my biggest fish for a long time. I was like super proud of that. And uh, I don't know, looking back on it, I feel like a little guilty because it just feels like a waste. Like I kept that fish just to get mounted. Yeah. If if it was up to me, I would have just done the replica because mm-hmm. they're so good at that nowadays. Yeah. I mean, there's taxidermists or I mean, would they be called taxidermists? Yeah. 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 Just do fish. Yep. So like, there's there's taxidermists out there that just do fish that literally just do from the pictures. So like. Yeah. Back, that's back that's exactly he, what I'm saying. Yeah. They can yeah. do it based off of your specs. You give mm-hmm. them. The length, the width, the circumference, whatever, mm-hmm. and they will they will match it. If you got a fin missing on one of your fish or a tag, they will match even that. Like get it down mm-hmm. to how you caught that, so that you have that memory. Mm-hmm. I mean, taxidermists are becoming a lot better now with technology. I mean, like even with you look at like a buck or even like a doe. Like you don't necessarily have to take that deer in to get it. You know set up to be on the wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, obviously you kill the deer. Like, you don't, you, it's not like fishing. That's not, you can't release the deer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like, I feel like there's certain people out there that would do that. You know, there's certain Go out there with tranquilizer pe- guns. Yeah. I feel like there the are picture. certain people. Like, there's, there's people out there that are just, they do it. They only care about the size of the, the rack. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they would go out there, just tranquilize the deer, just get it measured, all that kind of stuff. Just enough time for them to measure that and get it set up so they can get a replica. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then they'll release it back. And then in two years, they'll do it again. And eventually when it's on decline, that's when they shoot it. You sound like a conspiracy theorist. Hey, <laughs> I'm here for it. I, wanna, I, I hear like them all. It. I'm sure someone out there has done that. Oh. At least 100%. one person. 100%. Oh, yeah. But I would say there's more than one. I don't put Easily. that number over 10. I'm think I, I, I can go. 10. I don't. I put it over 10. I, that would do actually do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. I know. I can think of a few in my head right now that 100% would do that. <laughs> but keep, I'm not going to say. Please, it. please keep lie, them like, away from this podcast. I'm going to I'm gonna tell you guys after the podcast. I was going to say because I kind of want to know. Like, yeah. I, like, I want to know. <laughs> 100%. I but well, we're on fishing here, oh, so shit. that's, we are. that's we what are. we're talking about. Speaking of taxidermies, one <laughs> fish I would love to get a taxidermy of is, in a, is a salmon, mm-hmm. but the Christmas tree salmon. Mm. So there's a term. <laughs> he knows. I know exactly what you're going to say. There's a term. It's called a Christmas tree salmon. Okay. So it's a salmon that's coming up, and it's seen every hook and every line that's come up that stream, and it's when the line snaps off. So you catch a salmon... And literally has every lure, every salmon oh egg. My God. When you catch salmon, that's like the first thing they tell you is like, don't grab the fish. Like when you net it, don't grab it. Take it to the bank and 
take all the hooks off of it. Yeah. Because you'll grab that fish and you'll have probably six, seven hooks. You'll hook yourself onto it. Oh my god! Pray that you have yeah. your tetanus up to date. Yeah. Like <laughs> literally, we, there's Christmas. The you'll get Christmas trees. Like you'll see bright orange, bright pink hooks on them. Everything. Oh, you get the sponges, the egg sacs, dude. It's hilarious. I would love to catch a salmon that's just like that and keep all the hooks and get a whole taxidermy yeah. of it. It would be badass. So for that one there, would you keep that fish? At that moment, or would you get all the hooks out of it, all that kind of stuff, and then put it back after you get the picture, you know, go from there? For salmon, I wouldn't mind keeping because their whole run, their whole process is is they're going up and they're dying. True. And they taste good, too. Yeah. Salmon tastes good. I mean, that's like the big, that's like the fish that I will eat. Yeah. Is is salmon. So if I had one, I'd probably probably keep one and do it. But the problem is, is you have to take the hooks off because if you take Mm. your... You take your fish back to your truck, and you got a dozen hooks on it. Yeah. Fish and boat don't know what hook yours was. True. Yeah. If it's that... below the head, hey, that's your hook right there. You snagged that fish out. Oh, man. <laughs> that's the problem. Sir, that is rusted over. That is no so, way. So, in the sense of that, I probably wouldn't keep the hooks on the fish. Mm-hmm. I would get it taxidermy, but have them just say, hey, just place them wherever you want. Like, would you get... So would I'd you, keep the you get a picture? Yeah, I'd take a with picture all and keep yeah. the hooks and be like, hey, this is where they were at. Put yeah. them on there. It would be pretty cool. That would be fucking sick. Yeah. That would that be would, nice. That would be. Because I've and, caught a Christmas tree salmon, and it was, dude, it was like glittered with hooks. It was insane. <laughs> like one on the tail. Like you only have that one on the tail that's like golden, and that's like the star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be perfect. Yeah. Because you'll get them all across the back. You'll get them underneath. They'll get them on the fins, everywhere. It's Man. insane. That is, that. yeah, that would be a cool one. I would definitely want that one. Yeah. Now, would you have it like the uh, the line? Would you have it hanging down from the jaw? Or would you have it like kind of like, would you have it mounted? Would you have it going back like it's swimming? You know what I mean? No. You don't know what you I mean? You lost me. Okay, so. <laughs> you lost me. So for if a it's hanging on the wall, obviously the. Yeah. the the line's going to be hanging down. Yeah. All right. But would you have the line kind of like solid going back like it's swimming? Hmm. Like if it's a, if you have a log behind it. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. Then you have a fish. Yep. The same in there. And then you have like the, the line going back with the fish, like from the head to the tail. Yeah. Probably. Like, that yeah. would look pretty dope. Yeah, it would. And I'm like, man, that would be that would be cool right there. Mm-hmm. Like you, ha- you can see, like say it's hanging up on this wall and you can see all the lines going along the side of it mm-hmm. like that'd be fucking that sick would be pretty, like literally all the hooks have a little bit of line of snapped yes. off lines like yep. it's like yep that would be pretty dope that would yeah. be pretty dope yeah it's like almost like whiskers yeah all of it yeah all over the place yeah, yeah. i i think that i don't i wouldn't see why that wouldn't be hard to do have all like the the quote-unquote whiskers of the mm-hmm. line coming back like it would be pretty easy i think have them all go into the same rod That'd be fucking hilarious. The same rod. The same rod. Like <laughs> a swarm of hooks out there. Yeah, that would. I'm sure there's an asshole out there. I guarantee it. Like yep. six different lures on the same line. Hey. Tandem? No. With a bobber on the end. <laughs> hey, I fish with the bobber. Hey, I think don't knock it. I think that'd be another cool little piece to add on there. Like, say you have all those lines. Mm-hmm. And then also you have a line with one bobber on the end of it, on the side of it. That would be cool. It's like, hey, that guy right there almost got it. Yeah, but, you know, that guy almost got it. I think it was the bobber that he gave him too away. Slow, yeah. <laughs> too slow in the hook set. Yep. <laughs> too slow yep. in the hook set. Yeah. Bad at knots. Yeah. yeah. Bad at knots. Yep. Or if you're me, you just got old ass tip it. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Old line will do it. Yeah. That's not, you, always, you always got to do the fingernail check. You go, boop, it pops. I'm not using it no more. Yeah. Well, dude, like that, remember that the story that we just talked about where your dad laid into that one, dude? Yeah. So that, that fish that I lost, I had two flies on there that I tied up. Yeah. I was really curious which one it took. And I checked my line. I checked my tippet before I tied it on. I tested it before I stuck my line in the water. And as soon as that line went tense, it's like, it's off. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it just fails. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes it's unfortunate, but what can you do besides buy a new line? That's right. So I think Ethan had said his thing already. Zion, what is your, uh, what was it again? What was the, uh, the phrase that phrase guess... or, or term 
that mm-hmm. you feel might have shifted the industry for the better or for the you worse? Know what? I'll wait till it gets me. I don't know. I don't know. You go. You go. Let me you go. Sit, let me set it for a little bit. I'm tired of the word industry. Ooh, that's fair. Industry. I like that. That is fair. Yeah. I think hunting industry, fishing industry, like it's a fucking company. Like it's a fucking like hobby. Hunting and fishing. 100%. And it's getting out of control. Now we got all of them Instagram. Dude, fucking podcast. Damn podcast. <laughs> out of control. Yeah. Them podcasters are no, but fucking like, assholes. <laughs> I think they know everything. Yeah, the Dude. <laughs> They're el- educating the fish and the deer. Edumacating. Edumacating. But yeah, I think industry, hunting industry, fishing industry, I think that's one thing that needs to change because uh, it's a community. Kids make a whole Instagram bio say it's a personal vlog just to get a hooligan sponsor. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's an industry. It's it's uh, that's That's the most <laughs> irritating part. It's like everyone's like, you look at all the YouTubes, all right, the YouTube out there. You know, you have the, for me, personally, big into whitetail, all that kind of stuff. Like, mm-hmm. don't watch many fishing videos. So I'm just going to base it off whitetails for right now. Uh, the hunting public. You know, yep. you have everyone who wants to reach what the hunting public is doing right now. Um, yeah, I, I watched, uh, uh, what is that? Guggen. Guggen um, lures. Like, they had Bates. A, yeah, oh, Guggen yeah. Bates. Bates. They when had, I say hooligan, that's probably what I meant. Yeah, Guggen. Is it hooligan a company, too? Yeah. Yeah. But they have, um, like, I watched their YouTube videos for a long time because I, I liked what they were doing, you know? And, like, everyone, I feel like everyone who makes an Instagram automatically already has a YouTube channel. Like, guaranteed has oh, yeah. that. Like, because of the word industry. And if you make this a more about, like, a fucking community than an industry, I, I think the one we would all be come together instead of, like, bashing each other or, like, wanting to one-up everyone like mm-hmm. every podcast would work together every youtube channel would work together every person who fishes or hunts would work together like hey like there's enough enough fishing spots out there for everyone there's enough fucking hunting spots out there for everyone help another person out stop making about like oh you want to make millions of dollars off this shit like yeah i would love to make money off this but really i love the fact that zion comes here and he shares his stories and all that kind of stuff. Like, I could care less what he's caught or, like, how big it was or anything like that. Like, I don't give two fucks. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm pr- I'm happy that you're you're here and you caught some yeah. big fish. Like, I see the pictures and, like, I'm like, holy shit. Like, my biggest one's, like, 12 inches, you know? Or, like, six, you know? And it's – I think that's the one thing that's needs to change about this, like – Stop calling it industry and start calling it a community and bring each other fuck together. I wholeheartedly agree. 2023 slogan? Yeah. Community? Bring community. the fucking community together. Put that on a shirt. Put it on a shirt. <laughs> but, I mean, at this point, we're, we have a new phrase, a slogan that we try to, like, incorporate. Mm-hmm. Not even, like, obviously, like, into the podcast, but, like, even just into our, like, our lives. Because, mm-hmm. like, the first... Was this the first one? Don't shame the game. Was that our first one? Like official? Yeah, yeah. Don't shame the game. Like don't yeah. shame the game. Mm-hmm. That was the first one. Like we don't like you. I don't. You shoot a basket six mm-hmm. or a hundred and sixty inch eight point or whatever. Like we're proud mm-hmm. for either. We're like happy as shit no matter what. Cool. Next year, measuring the memories. Mm-hmm. This was technically last year. Measure. Yeah, yeah. measuring the memories. Right. Yeah. Took pressure off of ourselves. Like I ate tag soup last year. Try to try to take pressure off, but yeah, I still we, feel the fucking pressure. Yeah, still feel the pressure, but like <laughs> we, we wanted to get back to like the roots. Like, why do we mm-hmm. actually do this? Like, why do we, we do it for the memories? Mm-hmm. Because we this is something that we genuinely love to do. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't, you know, stop worrying about the social media. Stop worrying about like, oh, we we're a podcast, so we have to hit these standards. That in all reality, we kind of set the standards ourselves. Like the, the listeners didn't set these standards. Mm-hmm. Like we did. Yep. For ourselves. And it's like, why Why did we do that? So mm-hmm. what we did, measuring the memories. That's get back to the old roots. 2023, all about community. Yep. Like it's... I'm cool with it. I feel like the industry has, like, everything you look at, it's always like, big this, big that. It's yeah. never about, like, did you enjoy it? Yeah. 
did you enjoy catching that fish? Like, Andrew, did you enjoy <clears throat> catching that steelhead? I froze my ass off for about 72 hours. Yeah. yeah. I, I loved that. He went through it, like, yeah. for as bad as, like, when we usually go up, like, it's cold. Mm-hmm. Like, he was up there in probably one of the worst weathers I've probably been up there. Yeah. He went through the rough of it. Like, it was severe. Like, for him to catch that fish, I was just as happy. I was probably, literally, the, probably the same amount of happiness as when he yeah. caught his fish. Like, mm-hmm. I was fucking ecstatic on the yeah. stream. Like, he hooked on to like, let's fucking go. Yeah. I fucking threw my fo- my pole on the side. I was like, I'm grabbing my nails out there ready. Like, we're going to get this fucker in today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, your line snaps, I'm jumping in. I'm fucking grabbing that fish. Like, your fucking hook's still on that motherfucker. You caught that. We're bringing it the fuck in. Yeah. And that's what needs to happen more. Yes. You know, people need to be happy for each other. Like, if Ethan and I go out hunting together or fishing together, Andrew and I go hunting and fishing together. Like, you and I go hunting and fishing together. Like, be happy for the other person. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't see many people doing that People anymore. get pretty competitive. Yeah. And, like, yeah. a lot of my – I barely don't really fish with none of my friends because, like, that's how a lot of my friends are – and like really competitive they post like mm-hmm. their biggest catches they do all that stuff like when i met andrew like i knew andrew i'll take andrew fishing with me any day because he was more about being out in the woods being mm-hmm. out on the stream and was more about looking at the mountains yeah like he was taking in everything mm-hmm. it wasn't oh i'm catching this big fish right here he wasn't he wasn't sight fishing he wasn't walking the stream looking for the biggest fish in the water he was mm-hmm. I'm going to fish this ripple. There might be a fish there. Mm -hmm. He's fishing, enjoying being in the moment and being out there. Yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm, I kind of took like late season hunting. I took that into effect because like I I put so much time into scouting in the off season, Mm -hmm. you know, and then like hunt those spots and like late season, it's like, I'm going to go hunt a new area that I never set foot in before. Like never sat a stand, anything like that. Like, that's what I didn't like. I find more joy in that than when you put so much time and effort into one spot. Mm-hmm. Like the same thing. Like it, it's like if you put so much, if you're looking for these fish as you're going down the stream, you're not taking in all the surroundings. Like you're not you actually enjoying the it. most beautiful thing you'll ever see in your life. Yeah. Like up in Erie, it's literally you take a couple of steps in this pot, you'll ever see the most beautiful backdrop of a rock shelf. Nope. Something you not like. It's completely insane to me. Every time I go to Erie, it feels like you're not even in PA. Yeah. The landscape changes, the rocks change, being up there, because when it snows up there, it snows, like it's cold, the water changes, and like, the one thing I love about fishing is when it gets cold and the snow hits the water, the water color changes, and like, it's just a, a different environment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you take those little things in, like, yeah, and that's, to wrap it up, like that's, industry's not catching that, they're just catching, oh, Dollar grip and grin, dude. They yep. they put it in the the cut scenes, like mm-hmm. in between shots. Like, mm-hmm. oh, there's a picture of a bald eagle. There's a, a landscape or whatever. That's the stuff I want to see more of. Yep. Like, film that. Put a big segment of that in. Like, I want to see the backdrop. I want to see the wildlife. Mm-hmm. I want to see people enjoying it, not just I'm here for this and yeah. this only. And that's. Oh, excuse me. My like, God. I get well, I get home watching a hunting and fishing. So, like, of course I want to see him shoot a big buck. I want to yeah. see him catch that big fish. But, like, mm-hmm. the big part of, like, hunting for me, like, is being in their woods before dark, watching the sunrise, mm-hmm. hearing that squirrel come out that... <laughs> hearing <laughs> all the noises. <laughs> see, like, like, fucking squirrels. All this stuff before you even <laughs> see that stuff. Like, the little things that you take in, like, you're yep. vocally, like, in tune with the world. Like, not the yeah. world, but nature. Yeah. You're you're a piece, really. but sometimes it's, you can't capture that on camera too. No, you can't. Like that's mm-hmm. why I like the hunting public, and when I watch Gookin, those are the two to me in both sides, hunting and fishing, that I feel like are most comparable because they do that. They get the backstory, you get the whole camp feel, mm-hmm. and then you get the whole you know like you get all those scenes, you get all that kind of stuff. Like that's what I love the most. Like and that's what I don't. I mean. I'm happy as hell when someone shoots a big buck or shoots or catches a big fish. Like, it's like, but you got to get back to the roots, man. Like, it's, I'm tired of this whole industry shit. Like, the outdoor, like, the out, Great American Outdoor Show, which we'll be going to, yep. is absolutely great. But, dude, that doesn't catch this. Like, the reason we made this studio, made this podcast, because we like the camp feel. Mm-hmm. And that's a, the best part of it. Mm-hmm. And we might not always catch everything that, is at camp, but we're gonna fucking try. 
Like that's the thing. Like bring the fucking community back. I'm tired of this industry shit. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Like I want free shit from from po- from partners. But oh yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> because the industry because everything's getting so expensive, and that's why we'll take free shit over money any day. Yeah. But damn it, like bring community back. So that's in the, in a long sense that's that's my that's my rant. That's valid. Yeah. I mean that, yeah. that's that's valid. Yeah. I like it. Zion. That was a. I feel like gave me no time to talk because that was such a great conversation. <laughs> yeah. I don't know a word. Yeah. Or a phrase. <laughs> I don't know. He's like, shit, shit man. I don't yeah, know. I I do this question before I came here, I would have thought of something real good. I don't know. Damn it, Andrew. You should have sent him the question. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's all right. You can send one to me, and we'll bring it up on the next pod. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. We'll probably do that. I can't think of anything off the top of the head. Yeah. It's hard. Dude, it really is. Cody sent us that text in our group chat, and I was like, what the hell is he talking about? What does that about? mean? Like, I was like, can you give me an example? Like, he used Big Buck Down as his example. I was mm-hmm. like, ah. I get what he's getting at, but I, I can't think of anything. Mm-hmm. So, well, send us something in for the next time. I, pro- I, I definitely could probably name probably a few yeah. things off my head, but like on right now, I just definitely couldn't think of something hey, off the dome. You're on the spot. It's, it's, it's a hard it's, question. Yeah, no, it's definitely yeah. a hard question. And the only reason I thought of the industry is because literally Andrew just said it. Yeah. yeah. Like that's that's the thing. Like, and I, I, the weird thing is like in the woods or when I'm driving the car or whatever, like I. I think of shit all the time, but then it comes to the actual podcast and completely past my mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, I mean, if you think something, let us know, and then we'll just oh, for sure. put it out there in the intro or something like that. Like, because the intro won't be for like a couple of weeks anyway. Yeah, so just a few weeks, <laughs> a few weeks from now. Yeah. But I mean, is there anything else you want to add? Oh, how about this? How about what's your biggest tip to a listener? Who wants to go fishing for steelheads or fishing in general? Hmm. Well, in a sense, it depends on who's going. If it's your first time mm-hmm. up there, it's going to be rough. Yeah. But if like if you know how to fly fish, like Andrew had all the basics. He knew how to fly fish. He knew how to fish a stream, and he struggled hard. His mm-hmm. whole first day didn't catch nothing. He was like, it was difficult to understand it. Mm-hmm. So. A lot of things like if you're struggling, you're having bad days. Talk to somebody. Yeah. If you're on the stream, someone. If you're seeing someone catch fish, play. Like, hey, can you help me? Like, what's mm-hmm. going on? What are you using? Most people are. Most people are genuine people. Like, oh, I'll show you what fly I'm using, or they'll help you set up your poles. Like my dad, when we go up, like if we see someone having a bad day, like, we'll be like, what are you doing? What's going on? Mm-hmm. Like, we'll, sh- we'll literally, I'll set my pole up. I'll be like, let me see what you're using. Like, I, the one dude I was up there before. I hope this older guy, he was like, he had like a split shot, swivel, quick release thing on his fly. I've never seen that in my entire life. So, you know, it's like they had like a snap swivels for like bass, mm-hmm. bass stuff. They have it for flies. It's like a really tiny one. I'm like, and it was one of them days where it was like super pressured. The water was low and the fish were just going around the lines. I'm mm-hmm. like, I've never seen it before. I was like, if you're, I was like, first of all, I'm like, I'm like, he knew the water was pressured. I'm like, when it gets like this. You got to take that shit off. Take, <laughs> like, you got to go get rid of it. Go as naked as you can. Yeah. As basic and as small as you can. When they're fish are pressured, you're going thinnest line, no nothing attached. Like, I would, I'd highly recommend taking a bobber, bo- nothing on your line. I would go straight to a fly. If you need a weight, put a weight on it. Yeah. Because they they see everything. They'll know exactly what's in their face. Okay. And lately, I was, like, helping the dude. The hook, dude ended up hooking up, like, probably, like, five casts after I helped him. But, like, dude was up there. Like, he said he'd been going up there for, like, four years and never caught one. Shit. That's why. Wow. That's why. And he says, and the thing about him is he talks to people. Like yeah. He goes to fly shops, and I feel like sh- that's the thing about me. It's, that, that's probably a good term. Like, fly shop, people in fly shops t- telling people what, what what's biting or what stuff to use. Because mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of time you go up there, you'll meet go to you'll go to great shops, like fly shops, fishing shops. Mm-hmm. You'll meet really great locals, and they'll help you out. And I feel like some people are not. Like, you yeah. can go in there. I can sometimes read bullshit because... I've gone up there multiple times and I caught fish on everything. And like sometimes I feel like people are out there to be like, you should buy this. This is yeah. what you need. Or you're not, you you use this app because this is what people are using and all that stuff. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Well, there you go. Also, look at, look at the trees. Look at what people have lost. Yeah. I mean, those aren't, mm. those aren't great fishermen, but they're probably on the right track. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, shit, dude, the steely that I caught. 
I pulled that fly out of a tree mm-hmm. and then stuck it in a fish's mouth. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I would not count the, the banks out. Like, there's, That's awesome. there's some information in those trees. Check it out. Mm-hmm. Cool. Zion, where can people follow along with you and just follow you on Instagram or Facebook or whatever? Yeah, I, everything's usually my name is Zion Terry. Okay. I think my Instagram is Zion Terry underscore 23. So, it's pretty basic. I'm sure it'll pop up if you just type my name. Up. Well, Z Y O N. Okay. Yep. Yep. If you type in, most people do it ZIY. Not the uh, not the basketball player. Not the basketball player. Okay. Got a lot. I'm like, no. Gotcha. I totally Z-Y-O-N. spelled it wrong. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm I totally spelled it wrong. wrong. I'm over here crossing it out. Like, Whoopsies. <laughs> you know wrong. the pencil has an eraser on it, right? It was just easier to do that. Okay. Gotcha. I love going to the restaurants right. and they take my name. I'm like Zion. They're like, hmm. And some of them like sit there and think about it and they're like ZION. I'm like, no, that's not it. <laughs> close, but no. Very close. Well, cool. It was awesome having you in the studio. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. It is a great time. You guys are great. Yeah. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Literally good. my first night meeting you guys, and like we had a great conversation. Yeah. It was genuine. Hell was yeah. Genuine. All right. Well, that's the podcast. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, that's it. Till next time, folks. All right. Till next time. See y'all. <laughs>